listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb gonna slide down in big hills you know what i mean on the big nice burgundy snowboard okay here we go again we are back in the booth at the bomb hole which is presented by liquid death and pub beer now stony buds how are we doing my friend so good my dog always love to hear that now to my left we have kelly hart kelly what's happening dude you guys are so good dude <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate hearing that, Kelly. That means a lot. Now, uh, d- going to do a brief intro for people that are unfamiliar. Uh, professional skater, podcast co-host of the Nine Club, skateboard team manager for Mob Grip S and Richta, street league judge, 2015 winner of Trick of the Year, and jump rope master, man of many talents. I don't know if the jump rope master is part of my job, but, you know, you, I like it. Yeah. You should, yeah. Well, you're damn near professional looks like from, <laughs> at this point. So what, are you, what are you doing out here in Salt Lake? I was out here judging the street league. Um, yeah. Good contest. It was great. Dude, so climactic. Uh, just the women's, the men's. I, I wouldn't want to be a judge. Oh, uh, I mean, I enjoy doing it. I just want to make sure skateboarding's in, you know, everyone's put in the right place and I don't know. It's it's a it's a interesting thing to do, but it's fun. So I, I heard recently you didn't get into it, but I know you're supposed to be a judge for the Olympics, correct? Yeah. What happened there? Um. So, yeah, I was doing world skate. Uh, I was dr- doing the street league judging, and then world skate got involved with there. Um, and I was doing the world skate events, and since it was going to the Olympics, there were, and there were like you know on snowboarding, probably similar things with coaches and complaining about this or that or whatever you know um i guess someone had made a complaint that i had worked for soltech or a company that was endorsing a, one of the skateboarders and that i would it was a conflict of interest which as skateboarders snowboarders i don't know like you that's never happened yeah. really before you know what i mean and if there was you would see you would see it there's no entering documentation of me getting someone a higher score because they or a pair of shoes that I liked, you know what I mean? Or I worked for. So that happened. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, I understand that, but this, I hope you know that that's not how it goes. It's never been that way. So, yeah, that was that. And then I ended up doing social media for World Skate Out There, which was honestly just as fun. It was really cool to work with like Atiba, Jeff Landy, Bryce Knights, um, Jamie Owens. It was cool. But yeah, that, that happened. And then they were like, hey, we have to, like, we can't. We cannot avoid this. We have to act on this because the IOC and imagine like whatever person gets to the podium and they're like, they didn't get the score they wanted. And they're like that because if Kelly was a judge and blah, blah, even though no one I sponsored really was in the event, Mm -hmm. um, they still could make that complaint and to be a, involved with that would be horrible yeah you know what i mean like insider trading yeah, that would be the worst. but that's fucking bullshit yeah i feel like in snowboarding and skating that would never happen like you're saying it's yeah and I, there's only a handful of judges out there to be honest not everyone's a good judge yeah just because you skate just in case just if you're like even if you're just a great skateboarder doesn't mean you're a good judge yeah you know so there's a lot of like work to do on the judging side but there's so when you don't when you take me out there's not a lot of a ton of other people you could just be like yeah Easy, Kelly can, this person can take Kelly's spot. But, I mean, there are good judges for sure. So, it was just something interesting that happened. I've never have actually happened. Mm-hmm. I was so excited to be a judge in the Olympics, and then I got shut down, which kind of felt like I was just sad. You know, not, like, I wasn't torn apart, but I was like, man, that would have been cool. It was almost a cool thing to, like, hey, mom and dad, I'm going to the Olympics. I'm going to be a judge. But, like, you know, I also wanted to service skateboarding as a whole to do the best I could to – you know, make sure the results were good. But the, the results in the Olympics were awesome. Mm-hmm. They were great. So it was fun to watch. Dude, that was unbelievable. And I wonder what it's going to do for skateboarding. Because yeah. we were just at Street League. And uh, is it Raisa? How do you yeah. say her name? Raisa. Raisa had like half of the crowd, the little Brazilian girl, was like wearing Brazilian flags. They didn't even look like they were skateboarders. Like it seemed like she just brought out the civilian Brazilians from <laughs> civilian Salt Lake Brazilian. <laughs> and civilian Brazilians. Yeah. And, like, and dude, I ju- it just seems like it, it's a good thing because it brings a lot more people in. Yeah. You know, like those big events, those big platforms. and It was pretty interesting when I was doing the social media stuff for World Skate and I would look at the analytics of like where, you know, you see on Instagram, like where your followers are from. It was like 25% was Brazil. 
No way. Yeah, and like you would see it on the social, like the, when there was a Brazilian, like a posted photo or video, people were going, they had just Brazilian flags, and you saw it, they, they came out for like I was like I didn't know how many Brazilians were out here. Like I, I don't know. I mean, like obviously they're everywhere, but. I didn't know we even yeah, had any know. in the city. Honestly, I didn't, I didn't even know we had a population in Brazil at all. Yeah, and they came. Um, it was it was super sick to see that. And um, I heard that like skateboarding is the second biggest score uh, sport in Brazil, right mm -hmm. behind soccer. So I'm like, that's pretty <laughs> wild. That's it, cool. I went. I saw her following went from like a few hundred thousand to six point eight million. Yeah, in, that was wow. from the Olympics. From the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. wild. Woo. Yeah, that was. I remember we like literally watched that happen you know mm -hmm. i was like oh this is gonna be exciting maybe she'll get i don't you never think of that yeah, yeah. you never like oh cool maybe she'll get more followers like yeah. but then then that became a thing now i'm like okay let's see how much sky brown gets at the olympics you know and you're like well that's crazy she got like a million followers that's cool like i'm like why why are we that's such a wild thing to look <laughs> at but it's really cool it's really cool i mean rice uh honestly She's 13 years old, dude. Imagine how good she's going to be when she's 18. I, I keep yeah. saying it's over for all these other yeah. women. Like, it's <laughs> over. I'm sorry. Like, she's she's insane. Yeah, it's going to be incredible to watch. And just to watch her skate. And I always trip out on the – when she did the kid from board to win, I was like, dude, you have to just – everyone's cheering and chanting your name, and you just lay it down like that? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's a true I professional just, skateboarder right there. Dude, that, I was actually watching. I was like, skateboarding is a sport, like, in this sense. In the sense that, like – an arena of people can erupt when you land a trick, like yeah. creating that, that arc of a climax. Like you're at a, uh, like a, like a hockey game and somebody scores a game winning goal and the stadium erupts, like to be able to create a contest that, you know, the way it's shuffled and, and, yeah. and how the, the, the scoring changes and keeps people on the edge of their seats. It's, it's awesome for skateboarding to have that. Too. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it doesn't always end up like that, the street yeah. leagues or whatever, but that one was perfect on both ends, to be honest. So. And, and it's so sub sub Objective and and uh, forgive my ignorance because I haven't looked into the how you guys do the judging, but since it's so subjective, do you guys have like things are worth certain points or is it is it all just kind of based on your guys' experience skating? It's like it's mostly the experience, but also what uh, I wouldn't say actually it's our experience. We 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 know how tough the tricks yes. are, and you can put them into a scale, I guess yep. you would say. And it's interesting, you know, they changed it this year to it used to be the thing called two five four, so it was like. You have two runs, you have five best tricks, and you take four of those scores. Now it's one, four, three. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting, and the skaters, I think, are developing or, like, understanding the new new way of doing it. So, yeah, I mean, at the, and then they in, in the finals, the top four go on, and they have two – they get to, to fill – or have two more tries. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty interesting, too. That kind of builds up this whole, you know – climactic thing so yeah it's beautiful cool. i saw well we uh rode for lrg i was yeah. a snowboarder skater for lrg years back had some went on a good trip i believe you came here and we hung out i can vaguely remember but it was a good time yeah i mean those trips were out of hand. they were out of control they were hilarious because jonas uh rest in peace man he we'd go on these trips dude like <laughs> 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 he it was one of the funniest things, dude, because he would take us all out to do these, like, what are the photo shoots for, like, the catalogs. Mm -hmm. And we'd go to, like, um, where did I go? Uh, the National Park, Yellowstone, not Yellowstone. I can't remember where we were. I, I forget, sorry. But we would go to, like, these crazy places, just drink beers and eat food and wear awesome shit and then just take photos. That's mm -hmm. all we did all day. Dude, was, I, there was, was some where they rented helicopters what and year planes. Was this? You guys met up. 2010. That's probably oh, about sick. right. Yeah, because it was right before the LRG video came out, mm. and it was right when I was filming for my barracks thing. I remember mm -hmm. that. So. And cool. also, Billy Marks was on LRG, and he was a judge sitting next to you. Yeah. I was judging with Billy. I mean, Is Billy's he, just a funny-ass dude. You yeah. know Billy? Yeah. Like, he, he's just a – he has his own humor, and it's mad funny, and – uh I don't know. Yeah, it's cool. He's a good judge, and it's fun to hang out with him. He's a good judge because that's what I wonder. He seems like a bit of a critic at times where I'm like, I wonder what he's thinking over there. Cause <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny because everyone kind of has their own, like, I'm a manual type dude and ledges, and he's like a gnarly handrail guy. True. Like, you know, yeah. so it's, it's so you trip out sometimes when you know people and you, you like, you just know them as a friend, but you're like, dude, you're a really gnarly skateboarder. Yeah. But like, you know what I mean? Totally. Like, I trip out on that, like, with a lot of my friends, to be honest, but it's pretty cool. And you got Mike Mo. Who, who are all the judges for that? Matter? For this for this stop, it was Mike Mo, um, myself, Scott Path, which is Big Cat from uh, oh, yeah. Deer Deck Show. Yeah, that's who that was. I was trying yeah. to figure that out. I was looking at He's looking a good, he's a he still skates, but, like, his footage when me and him were coming up together, like, is pretty incredible. And then uh, Davis Torgerson. Yeah, so it's us five, yeah. 
It's cool. Solid. Yeah. I'm, a bi- I'm a big Mike Mo fan, so just to hang out with him in general was always was cool too. Mm-hmm. Same yeah. judges for all three. Is there three street leagues? Um, so I didn't get a chance to do the last one because I was at the Olympics. Wow. But I don't know. They might be switching them every now and then because I think going in the next year they're going to have – I think eight stops, and I think it's kind of like they kind of need to rotate it because not everyone is available. Yeah, because yeah. that's that's a lot, you know. Eight's a big commitment. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, let's run it back to the the arc of your career a little bit, and I know you grew up uh, in Laguna Beach, Laguna Hills, Laguna Hills. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. yeah. I <laughs> yeah, always correct, correct well, you on the keeping. Well, yeah. I always say that because if you're like if we're out here and I'm like if someone's like, hey, where are you from? I'm like laguna beach because they're not going to know where laguna hills is Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like right it's they're connected basically yeah so sorry yeah all good no uh but i know that yeah who was your first sponsor and how did how did you get sponsored let's get into that uh my first sponsor was uh a skate shop called jay's board shop right down the street from my house and i remember like uh these guys are my friends to this day still which is pretty rad but my friend vince domingo who was the lrg team manager before tyrone and th- th- oh, yeah, it's th- funny because Tyrone and Vince are like best friends. Then mm-hmm. I met them when I was young. Vince was like, yeah, I'll take you, like, uh, come skating with us. And it was a randomly this, one of my neighbors that I didn't even know, lived like up around the corner, had this skate park in his backyard, which is, that's that was not heard of back then. Like, well, he had like a ledge and a, and a flat bar. He's like, cool, we're going to go skate this guy's house. Let's go. And I skated and I never did, like, I was doing like crook shove it and like, I wasn't that good, but... I don't know. I did like 50, 50 kickflip out and like, whatever, you know, maybe a back tail shove. And, um, he dropped me off after it was a fun day of skating at the, and he's like, yeah, you're, you're on the team, dude. I'm going to put you on the team. Sick. Oh, I ran in the house. Mom was sleeping. She was literally sleeping. I ran, mom, I got sponsored. <laughs> ah, I woke her up and she was like, Oh, that's awesome. That's great. But, um, that's literally your goal when you're a kid is just to be able to say, I'm sponsored. I'm sponsored. Dude, like that's it doesn't it. even matter by who. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. You go into when you go to like I'm going to junior high and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm sponsored. I'm sponsored. Dude. <laughs> like, and that was like you know for all of us as kids that was like pretty insane. Mm-hmm. You know, like we were all trying to get there. There was another shop called Stealing Boards that was right across from the skate park that uh, I grew up skating in Laguna Hills, and I never actually randomly Ronnie Bertino worked there, who's like an old uh, legendary like pro for Plan B back in the day. It's random, but uh, my friends were like. Ride for them, and then my other friends ride for Sticks, where Anthony Van England worked randomly back in the day. And then I just James was right there, so I kind of would just go there every day. But yeah, no, it was it was, it was cool, and that, that kind of started my friendship with all my friends back home. You know, did you ever have a sponsor me tape? I did. So my and then I got sponsored. I they hooked me. You know, you know how it goes. Like you, you shop sponsor, and then like they kind of send your tape out to the reps. And was this a was this a DVD or was this a no? Tape? This is tape. VHS. This, this is VHS. VHS. Tape. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that dates base. you. That yeah. Dates you. yeah. I, I made a few of those, and I just wasn't there. Like the talent wasn't there, but I was like psyched. You know what I mean? But I could see myself. But I remember when I was seventeen, something clicked in my head that like I was really scared to jump down rails or gaps. Just never happened. And I was just too scared. And I was just skate ledges and manual pads. Something clicked. I like, I really, something, somewhat, I've, maybe it was Brian Winning's part, or it was just that era, I think, where like I saw really dope dudes that I connected with, like manual dudes and ledge guys that would jump down big shit. I was like, that looks, they make it look fun to me, you know? So then I started skating gaps. And then um, I got, I sent, so I ended up getting a ride for a company called Sugar Sports, which is a smaller brand um, in Santa Monica. And then from there, I got I started skating with Chris Roberts, and but he doesn't re, he he says he doesn't remember knowing me back then. But I'd be around. I'm mostly skate with this guy Robbie McKinley. Oh yeah, uh, Robert. Yeah, yeah, super sick dude. One of my favorite skaters growing up, and he kind of gave me some, you know, he, he kind of helped me out like a little coach, I guess you would say. He's like, hey dude, like I know you want to kind of go further. It's like maybe you should. And they're like all friends. He's friends with a guy that runs Sugar Sports. He's like, maybe you should kind of like think about who you really want to ride for, you know? And I was like, uh, and he got hooked me up with DC at that time too. So I kind of just listened to him, but also kind of understood. And then I saw, I got a box from shorties and I got a box from aesthetics. Um, Cause my friend Tony Nguyen skated for shorties. Mm-hmm. So he got me, but there was no really interest at shorties from them looking at me. There was some interest, I guess, from the team manager at aesthetics. And then I, all I really wanted to do was send my stuff to expedition on a random note, it was funny talking to Mike Mo about this the other day. I don't know if you guys dealt with this. And so, I mean, you, I mean, you're you're insane snowboard. I don't know how like what, like I, I looked at like Girl and Chocolate and like Alien Workshop as like the shit, 
And it was almost like they were so good and they were so dope. I didn't even want to send my sponsor me tape to him because I just know I wouldn't, I couldn't hang with those untouchable. dudes. Untouchable. Like it was like untouchable. Yeah. But I'm not saying Expedition was, oh, that's easy. I'll do that. I actually related to Expedition. Mm -hmm. I was like, I love those skaters. And there was some connect to, that someone uh, gave my sponsor me tape. The guys at Jay's gave my tape to this guy, Eli, that does gold wheels. And they had just started doing KO at that point, which Expedition was involved. He kind of gave me a good connect there. And then, um, I sent like four sponsor me tapes to Expedition, and then funny story. Uh, oh, real quick, Troy Morgan called me back. I sent the fourth one. Troy called me the next day. Okay, he's sick. like, "Hey, come down to Ko, and I want to give you boards." And I was like, "Fuck yes, dude! I've been trying fucking three years. Like, let's go." I go down there. And they basically, I mean, met Ryan Gallant that same yep. day, and Ryan, like, I guess, says something. Troy's like, "Oh, he's got a nice kickflip. I'm down to put him on." Like, it wasn't even like it was kind of just happened right there. Mm -hmm. So I hang out with Shannon Jinguanian, who's like one of the pros and owners yep. of it back then. Shanny, yeah, yeah, love him, dude. So a good friend, but I haven't seen him for a while. Shout out to Shanny. We'll give him a little air. <laughs> <home. laughs> uh, we're all like looking through these tapes of like all the sponsor me tapes that he has, and and I found one of mine in there, and we put it in. I'm like, oh, let's watch it. I don't remember which one this was. And I put it in. And it was a Mike Tyson fight, just recorded over it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone recorded yeah. over it. I was like, dude, what the fuck? He's like, you didn't. <laughs> just kind of trying to find something to record the fight with. The yeah. young kids don't. The young kids don't even don't even know about that struggle. But yeah, yeah dude, just recorded over. The, uh, sponsor me tape. Boom. Yeah, yeah fuck that. That's dude. sick. You had the persistence to send them three or four different ones. Yeah. No, I it was. It was a fun process just to go skate with your friends and kind of. And then I started to really push myself. Um, I still have had a. I pushed myself back. Like, I don't know. I was never, I didn't want to get too gnarly. It would skate big shit, but I pushed myself to learn new shit. Sidebar on some skate nerd stuff. Uh, the Expedition video, Alone. Yeah. God, that video is incredible. Super what, sick. So what time period is that in relation to Alone? So that's like a right after. So that. that just come out. It came out, I think the next, I remember going to that premiere. Yeah. I like, went, to go, went to that premiere in Boston. It was insane. Oh, really? Yeah, that's was Ryan, dope. like the hometown hero. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I went to the one in Encinitas, um, and then the next year is when I got on. Yeah. But that's when I kind of really fell in love with it. And mm -hmm. uh, when Stefan Janowski was on there, mm -hmm. and I, I loved it when Beeble was on there back mm -hmm. in the day, too. That was sick. Remember those interlock boards? Oh, yeah. You, you, you I tighten the hardware from the bottom? It was like a snowboard, but upside down, where you just tighten it from the bottom. They never took off, though. Yeah, it was a good, it's a good idea. I just, I think I couldn't look at my board without seeing the bolts. On top, yeah, right. You, you just rip I mean? over the bolts. Like yeah, I yeah, tried it a few point. times, and it was only a certain shape. I think they made like in the in the size. I was like, I can't do it. Like I mm -hmm. couldn't. I would do 360 loops, and it felt mm -hmm. weird. So mental um, block. On it was that. a mental block. Yeah. But okay. Shani loved them, dude. I remember my threaded my Allen key. Like I threaded the thing where I fucked it up. I and I got my truck stuck on my skateboard when I was a kid. I oh fucking yeah. Had to, like <laughs> take it to the garage and like take oh, a hammer shit. and pry the shit off. But oh, I want to go back to what you we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, sending VHS sponsor me tapes. Now, I feel like nowadays, if you look at if you look at skateboarding, you kind of you know Instagram, take it or leave it. But you can kind of choose your own adventure. You can kind of create your own destiny with Instagram, right? Yes, for like, sure. If you, you if you're good enough and your clips are psycho enough and they rise to the top of the the feed, so to speak, like yeah. you're, you'll be seen and noticed. And I thought it was cool, like uh, seeing the new generation kind of come up and. One of my favorites, one that kind of blew up, uh, was that his name is Versace Plug on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, his name is Hune, I think yeah, you would yeah. say. I've, I mean, he, I I saw him on Instagram when I was starting to do expedition stuff. I was like, this kid is sick. Like, he made me stoked to go skate. So it was like, yeah, it was like kind of a cool thing to find. It was like he wasn't even sending me footage. I found him. But that's how, you know, that's how things go sometimes. But I was like, I hit him up like, yo, I want to put you on expedition. You want some boards? He's like, fuck yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Like YouTube is a whole different platform. Mm -hmm. And there's like people making like skateboarders doing things that are like not even in the skate industry, but they're like creating their own little thing on their own YouTube channel. It's pretty totally. wild. Yeah. Yeah. Whole separate, separate world over there. We yeah. see that in our yeah, sport too. There's, there's guys that aren't necessarily in industry, but they're just dominating YouTube in that's a way. That's wild, Like they right? can't get like the core shitty word to use but like core sponsors but they're like getting hundreds of thousands of views on them totally riding the snowboard around. do you guys do you, are you guys kind of welcoming them in to, yeah yeah absolutely okay, yeah, yeah. absolutely i mean we're we've we've had to kind of like take that like hater in us and and kind of like we, here this is our deal with our show it's like yeah. hey you you snowboard 
like you want to you like it come on into the conversation yeah, come on, come in, on over yeah, like, yeah. And, and the way i see it is like you need your core hater that is like niche that's like the cool guy club you yeah. need the cool guy club yeah. you need the you need the like guy that's going to go split board that's like really earthy you need the youtuber guy like they all make it work that's yeah. my theory and, yeah. but you know what's your thoughts on all that stuff i mean i think it's cool too i love people when they do it their own way dude i mean mm -hmm. i didn't i'm not saying that i did it like that but um i mean i got when i started working for soul tech and stuff it was basically I got, I turned pro and everything later on in life because of social media. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was just like, fuck, I'm going to post everything on Instagram because I was over listening to people tell me, Oh, I need this. I was, I wasn't, you should re rewind that back and explain the arc of your career to that more just to okay. build that up. Cause so, that's really interesting. I think. Yeah. I think I, I, I grew up in that, in, in that time frame where it was like thrasher trans world, get photos and magazines and video parts. That was it. A big fan of that. But over time, the barracks started to come around when it started, and I was like, this is sick. Because I never had, I don't relate the barracks to, it's not like Pier 7, like, but in my brain, it was something kind of like that, because I never had that spot where I could go and film and just sit there all day and do stuff. And I was like, and then you're getting exposure from that. And so people come up to me now, and they're like, cool, that's, dude, I grew up watching the barracks, dude. Like, I saw Jaden Smith on the streets, you know, it was Will Smith's son, mm -hmm. and he's like, Kelly! I was like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like he was unreal. Oh, yeah. he's like, dude, I grew up watching the barracks, dude. Like, and I was did like, did you recognize him right away? Yeah. Yeah. I was just kind of like, Oh, but I didn't, I wasn't going to be like, yo, what's up, dude. Yeah. Like, you know, he's getting hounded by people. Oh, I bet. Um, but I, so I basically started, you know, putting stuff out in the barracks. And I think back then when you're the core skater, especially the companies, they're seeing this happen and they're kind of like not accepting that they don't want that. But then they're kind of like, kind of want that at the same time you know they're like oh we want you to be in trans world and thrasher but i'm like no i want to be in, in the barracks like a video like I, if i'm posting my video content there's no other platforms doing that where you can just be out and just you know do stuff more of that way so i kind of went that route because i had more fun doing it and then i started posting a lot mm -hmm. of like social media stuff and i think that the companies weren't really they didn't understand that yet and I wasn't like a big pro or anything. I wasn't pro at all. So you're on, you're on, uh, expedition. At I was point. on expedition, yep. uh, LRG and I was flow for S, but I was getting paid a little bit. You know what I mean? They were helping me out. How much bisque we talking here? <laughs> <laughs> dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, back then dude, for flow, I thought it was a cool deal. Actually for being flow, I was getting 500 bucks a month. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's like for a float deal. Like yeah, usually people deal. just get yeah. nothing. Yeah, yeah. just flow. Yeah, no they cash. just get some <laughs> shoes or whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so yeah, it's, it's it's this new wave of how you can get yourself noticed. And I think what the, what the company's plans were was they had their way they wanted to do it. And then I just kind of didn't want to. And I, I, to be honest, I don't know. I don't think I could have done it the way they wanted to do it. You know, they're like, hey, we want a video part. And that it was... There was a point in my life where it was just really hard for me to do that. Um, this is life was going on. and But I really just wanted to do it at my own time. And that's something a company probably is like, what the hell? Like, no, like, you know how it goes. Like, you need, like, an ad. You're like, hey, I need an ad by this. But, like, I just kind of wasn't that way. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe I was hard to deal with. But Did you was, treat it as a job? What was your I mentality? Think, How would you approach like your I guess, career in air quotes? Dude, I didn't treat it. I just, I floated by, dude. I just, if it, if it worked out, it worked out. And if it didn't, it didn't, you know? I wasn't like, oh, I need to go with clips today and then film the video part. But then like, dude, I, if I had a video part, dude, like the LRG video, I didn't have that much footage for it. And it, I had all this footage from KO that I had had. And they were just like, yeah, just use that footage in the LRG video. And then I remember Tyrone being like, dude, you're not even going to have a part in this video. Last minute, I had to send over all his footage. He's like, <laughs> oh, shit. And he was all, I was like, fuck, I thought, I didn't think you were going to have a part in the video, bro. And I was like, yeah, I've been filming. I just do it on my own, you know? Like, I just do it. On my, I'm in San Diego at that point. I was like, I'm just going to go wherever I'm going. I'm going to go. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a good, I don't stack a lot of footage on, like, filming trips. I would stack, if I went to China, different deal. That's a whole different beast. Yeah, so I couldn't, I, I just kind of fell in, I was just in my own planet. And I kind of just wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it. And it's a little stubborn, but it wasn't like I was like, screw you, I'm not doing that. I just really thought this was something new, and I wanted to, to work with it. And so I got let go of all my companies that I wrote for. And I was like, literally, I remember the month, or no, the year of 2014, I think I made $6,000 the whole year. 
Like, Damn. Yeah, like, dude, like, it was good. Not good biscuits. That's like biscuits. That was super. It has, like, a 29-year-old dude about to turn 30. That was really challenging to, like, what am I doing? And, like, one thing I love my whole life, and it, when I thought of that as a job, it just wasn't as fun. But I was like, cool, I'm going to, now I have no one asking me for anything. I'm going to go do it myself. And so I started posting on Instagram like crazy. And then Don Brown, um, they were thinking Give about. Give him an air horn. Yeah. Love Don Brown, dude. Uh, he's my boss, and he's one of my great friends. And he's just one of, it's an honor to work with that dude every day. Um he was bringing back S, and he was like, and I lived right down the street from Soltech, basically, you know, like a 10-minute drive. And he, w- he was like, hey, I just want to let you know. I would always post shoes on my Instagram. It's like, I love skate shoes. It's my shit. And he's like, yeah, I want to give you some shoes. And I, he gave me some, and I was posting them. And I was getting shoes from Nike at that time, just flow from Scuba. And then uh, I kind of just started working with Don, and he, like, asked for some, like, what I thought on certain things. And he started bringing me around halfway through the year. He's the one that paid me $6,000. He gave me $1,000 a month uh, to just help out and whatever. And then in 2015 was when I got hired, so officially hired. And then uh, that's when my – that was the funnest time in my whole skate career. And you was, were the S team manager, I was a correct? team manager. And yeah. I didn't – had no board with no sponsor. At that point, too, I was riding uh, – Chico Brenes has a company called – or had a company called Central. Mm-hmm. Awesome company. It was super fun. Like, just to, I mean, I've known Chico for a long time through LRG stuff. He turned me pro when I was 30 and it was mainly me just like filming uh, my story and posting on my Instagram Mm -hmm. and man, I I didn't drink for 10 months and I swear if you don't, if you do that and just actually, you know what you asked or on your Patreon, you asked like, what was the best advice ever given to you? Lee DuPont. I told him this the other day. He's a filmer. Um, He was like, Kelly, if you just take a year out of your life and just focus on skating, like Fuck everything else. Don't party. Don't whatever, dude. Whatever it is. Just skate and focus on skating for a year. It'll change your life. I did that for when I turned 30 years old, and it changed my life. Not even kidding. That's sick to do at 30. Dude. Yeah. That's so rad. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was so healthy at that point. Like, uh, and my body just felt good. And I don't know. I was just started doing things I never thought I could do. And, I, yeah, it was so weird. And then... uh I just remember a big moment for me, too, was, like, skating at Jaquan one day. It was actually on Easter. And Jaquan's a spot in L.A. where it's just, like, packed with skaters on Sundays. Marble it's, ledges. Yeah, it's, like, granite marble ledges. And, like, Kalis was there, and I'm a huge fan of Kalis. And we're skating, we're talking, and he's like, yo, you should fake you try over this thing. And I was like, that's – those are the big blocks they have there. And it's like, yep. if you do a trick over that, it's, like, hard. I was like, I don't think I could do that. He's like, bro, you got fakie tray on that. And like he, the fact that Josh Kalis was telling me this, and I'm still a super fan, kind of like I kind of got out of my own element and like started trying it and it just worked out. And I think my eyes started to open up. I was like, what? what? Why was I acting like that when I was younger? I put, I really did not push myself to, to do that type of stuff. You know what I mean? Like I was really closed minded, I guess, trick wise. But that was a big thing for me, too. It was, like, that moment Josh posted it, and then people started posting it everywhere. And it was, like, this new way of, like, getting your name out there. Mm-hmm. Like, you're getting your name spread out there by your peers. You yeah. know what I mean? Your favorite skaters. Oh, man. And there's also something to be said, too, in doing it on your own terms. Because, you know, I think that as a if you're, if you're a sponsored athlete or if you're a pro – you know, you're a lot of times I feel like you're doing what you should be doing. Like, yeah. oh, like my other guys on my team are skating the big set. They're grinding the 15 stair. Like, I should be doing that. And there's like mental anguish where it's like it all goes back to, I think, too, when you're having fun, it all seems to work out, too. When you're like enjoying yourself on your skateboard, yeah. you're, you can you can have more fun. But if you're like kind of putting pressure on yourself and, and doing other you know, you, you don't always reach your potential when you're like forcing it or something. I don't know if that's yeah, I think having the job had me like I was focused on the job. Yeah. And so I wasn't like when I would skate, it was this. F- yeah. No. Like I, golf or something. Yeah. It was like, like, cool. I can just go skate all day. And I was like, I don't know. It, it felt that point in my life felt really, really good. Um, and I'm glad that's probably like my happiest moment, I would say, or year was just that just to like and I got my first board. Like she yeah, goes, you got your name on a board. Got my name on a board. I was like crying and shit. I'm like, I, everyone does that. A lot of people cry when they get the first board. It's like really emotional. But for me, it, I I could I was just it, I put it at such a high pedestal and it was 30 years old, dude. You know what I mean? Like it was, I've been dreaming about it since I was like 15. So 15. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Like 
working for it like one and then like they brought it to me to dinner one night and i was just like wow this i, I just couldn't believe it you know was it but, rare to get a bird at board at 30 i think it was very rare like it's funny we talk about the older dudes um they're like yeah back in the day you were, when you were done when you were 21 years old like <laughs> so to get a board at 30 i know times have obviously changed but yeah at 30 it just i just i put it past me like i was never going to get one yeah you know like people call me the man am or whatever and i did like i didn't even try like you know what i mean i wasn't like going so, getting thrasher covers so the, and then so then you you fakie tray over the the rectangle the big block and yeah. then and then right after that you got the trick of the year right the at the courthouse yeah the fakie tray the fakie mail yeah. yeah that was like i don't know how i look back at the fakie trays were feeling good at that point in your life yeah i always liked that trick because mm -hmm. it was like kind of like a powerhouse trick mm -hmm. where like fake fakie to me like fakie flips and like half cat flips and fake like always was just seemed like powerful trick right mm -hmm. and the fakie tray on that i didn't think it was possible mm -hmm. i don't i still don't know really understand i understand how i did it but like i'm like dude i had to be on it like <laughs> i was so on it mm -hmm. and the funny part was was that uh i didn't drink for the 10 months I turned pro and I skated this contest at the courthouse and I got second place. But I'm not even a contest, dude. It was a manual contest, so it's different, I guess. That night, I got drunk with all my friends. It was like my birthday. You know what I mean? It was like my birthday week. And then the week later, I did that. It was just like kind of just, I, I don't know, it was unreal to me. And then I remember I did it and I wasn't planning on even trying that trick. I just went there to skate to meet up with like homie Steve Vanasco. And I went to give him some shoes uh, that we re retro, the Sal 23. I gave him some, and he's like, "Dude, you should try that." And I was like, "That's insane." Have you, had you made it up without Manian at all? Or no, just, no not, I, not even. I had, up. I had like randomly tried it maybe before to see if I can even flip the board onto yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But it never worked. Mm -hmm. It wasn't me. I, I looked ridiculous. Every time it. you get stuffed, you look like you feel like a complete idiot. I mean, yeah, no, I, you got up. rejected. Yeah, basically. Rejected. <laughs> like, like you know what I mean. Like <laughs> you're just getting like it's super rejected every single time. Mm -hmm. But then there was a point where I figured out there was something I was doing wrong. I was like, man, if I just pop earlier and go faster the nose rotates earlier and then and then you could pull it up and then you get in there and i i fake you trade up it and i was like i'm done i don't even do anything else that was hard i can't believe i just did that you know and then he was like no you got to do it and i i got into one and i fell forward and i was like oh i can do this i don't and i was like this weird i was like i, I felt like i was like uh, Rudy or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's a great analogy. Yeah. It's awesome. Like, yeah. I've been trying my whole life for this moment. It's a Rudy like, moment. Yeah. It's a Rudy moment. <laughs> like, that song. Dude, I trip out. I watch that uh, that scene sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, in the movie when he's playing. Do you, do you, do you uh, get break into tears? Like, so I yeah, have, you, for sure. That's a tearjerker. I, I, I get emotional for things like that yeah. because of, like, the underdogs that really pull through with, yeah. like and do their thing at the end. But um, I wasn't thinking about that that moment. <laughs> <laughs> throwing your board down this is my fucking rudy <laughs> moment let's go yeah but it was like it was honestly i look back at it and it was like my whole life was building up to that moment almost it mm -hmm. felt like because it was like i had dreamt about doing mm. something almost sounds like more like an eminem eight mile kind of mm -hmm. mom spaghetti moment mom spaghetti. Well. It, weird enough i haven't seen that movie oh I, you've never seen what? eight miles yeah, I, I i haven't my friend tyrone makes fun of me all the time i haven't seen <laughs> i haven't seen a lot of movies <laughs> That's a like, good one. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm, I can't remember, but, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. So you're, no, you're, you're saying it was kind of weird, uh, as it was happening, you were kind of getting into something. Yeah. Like no. And like, uh, I, I was just in this moment and then I kind of, when I got into it and I held it, I, you could see in the footage, I'm like squatting, dude. I'm like barely even like on it. Cause it was hard to like get myself up, but I was like, I'm not letting this go. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I had, Maybe I didn't manual. I, I thought I got like half. No, I, I think the one I just got in and took it across was the only one I did. But um, yeah, I landed that. And it was like, once I did that, it was like literally everything I'd built my whole, like I want this, if I could have one trick in the world, like it would be like a dream trick. It would be that trick. And I was like, it's not, but it's not even possible. And I did it and at that moment. I, I, you see me when I landed, I'm like, I'm sweaty as shit. And I'm just like, I can't, am I, when I'm doing it, my it was uh beanie was so sweaty that it was like folding down a little bit you know how it folds mm -hmm, down mm -hmm. and you could it's like right here in my eyes <laughs> and i'm just like i landed i was like I'm, I'm taking this down dude and uh yeah i landed and i was like i remember doing it and my friend filmed it on the iphone and that was and roger's like first off actually i did it and i didn't tell anybody like there was a couple people there and i was like okay i'm gonna hold on to this one 
my friend, he first he acted like, oh, I didn't get it. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, I got it, I got it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I fucking almost shit my pants, dude. I was like, dude, get the fuck out of that here. That would suck. That would be, but yeah. and actually there was another. No uh, one would believe you. Yeah, yeah. dude. The fish dude, that, that got away. Dude, that man. Like, yeah, bullshit, where's the clip? <laughs> yeah, but, oh, I just did it. <laughs> that would be terrible. Yeah. There's only iPhone footage of that? So there was another dude there. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but um, it was a Brazilian dude, and he is filming Long Lens. And I didn't ask him to film it. Watch, I don't really care, but he filmed it. That's I, dope. I think I posted it somewhere on the line, but yeah, I'm glad he filmed that too. Yeah. I remember I I got it and I was like, I'm not, uh, what do I do with this? Like, that was like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm a team manager. Yeah, like, like, oh, I'm, pro, I'm like, yeah. do, I just, do I just post this or whatever? It? And it, it was, yeah, I just didn't know where to. And then, so I texted Don Brown. And I said, he's like, holy shit, dude. I was like, fuck, all right, cool. So I don't tell anyone. I go home, Roger's there. I don't say one, like, I talk to Roger, but I don't tell him I did it. Um, then I get phone, start getting phone calls. They're like, Tyrone called me and fucking Spanish Mike hit me up. And they're like, you're fucking crazy, dude. And I was kind of like, how did you guys find out? <laughs> like Peacock, Brian Peacock hit me up. And I was just kind of like, dude, people are hearing about this. So I cut, I hit up Tony Vitello at Thrasher and I was like, hey, dude, um, I know I, I got this clip the other day. I don't know if you're down to post it at all because Thrasher would always post like w some skating, whatever, here and there. I mean, I'm not <laughs> obviously they're posting skating here and there, but they would take like if someone sent him a clip that they like, they'd like throw it up on their on their Instagram, right? And he's like, "Fuck yeah, dude, we'll post <laughs> that shit." I was like, "Hey, would you mind?" And it was kind of worked out perfect. We had this thing going on with the Sal Twenty Three that was launched like that weekend, so I was like, "Cool." If I'm wearing the shoes, he posts it. I'm like, could you do me a favor and tag S and Central? And he's like, I normally wouldn't do that, but I got you on this. You know what I mean? He was really nice to do that. And uh, he, they posted on Thrasher, and then that was like a crazy moment. When, when I remember when they posted, it was like 7 o'clock or something, and I was at Jaquan, and people were like, yo, what the fuck? They're like, yo. They were like all giving me like, it was like this, it was a weird moment. It was like I finally turned pro. Jamie Thomas saw me like a few weeks later. And he was like, that moment seeing that was like you turning pro. Like your official, like everyone around the world kind of, Kelly Hart, oh dude, he did it. Like that's mm -hmm. the one thing maybe, I don't know. I just thought that was really cool. And um, like Guy Mariano texting me, Josh Kalis reposting it. Everyone, rep at that time, there was no story. So people were doing hard posts yeah. all the time. So it started getting hard posted by everyone, like my favorite skaters, like Mark Appiard, Josh Kalis. Um, dude, and then my, my Instagram shut down. I couldn't log in. You broke my, the internet? I bro I literally, like it literally <laughs> wouldn't let me sign into my Instagram so on my phone. too much action. It was insane. Like my phone, I got like, I got, <laughs> we're talking about Raice earlier. She got like 6 million followers. I'm like, I got 5,000 followers. <laughs> <laughs> Back like, then, that was a lot. That was that a lot. Big. That is a lot. That's yeah, big. I maybe got more. I don't know. But, like, just imagine what her phone, like, blows up. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Jesus. She, she must get locked out of her phone all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but that yeah, that was that was cool. And I was, like, I thought it was just kind of, I don't know, to get the recognition from my mm -hmm. peers and my favorite skaters. I think that's kind of what everyone kind of wants, you know? Yeah, you're it's right. Like, you that know, is that, what you're looking like, for. Like, you don't just want money. You want, like, respect from the, your people that you respect. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So... I thought that was really cool. That was a big, big moment in my life. And, like, I could gladly say I skated for all this long. And, like, I have that one. I'm, like, got yeah. that one under my belt. And I, it, I'm stoked to do it. You know what I mean? And what did you – so when you win the trick of the year, you guys do those cool commercials. Those are awesome. But what did you guys win some money too? Or? I think at that point, they say they give $10,000 away. But at that point, it was, like, it was the first one. And first off, I was a, I just got asked to be judged that year. So And then – because I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not skating anymore. I'm just a team manager. So like, perfect. You could be great. I actually filled Robbie McKinley's fucking judging spot. Mm -hmm. um, you'd be perfect for judge. And I was like, yeah, I'm down. Like, sounds good. Um, I was like, do you guys, is it is it weird that I work for Soul Tech? It, like, is it conflict of interest? If I'm judging, they're like, no, it's all good. Skate shit, dude. It's all, yeah. If you work for Nike, it might be a little different. You know what I mean? But, uh, like, they were having the judges judge who's going to win trick of the year. Oh, got it, yeah. And then they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like you like you're a judge like, like and I was so I had to like kind of just like I entered it and I was like oh I'm down I'm putting this in there um, and you were a judge that and I was year. a judge <laughs> yeah so I was kind of like respectfully to like bowed out on like being a judge on that on that yep. part um, I had no idea I was gonna win and then they surprised me and or like I got the notification and I was like wow this is insane. 
But uh, that's got to be a big deal. It was cool. It was it was the first time it happened. It was just kind of, and then people. It, it is a cool thing, right? Yeah. Like it's a good. It's a kind of a cool contest. Yeah. I was very stoked to be a part of it, and like it, uh, at that point, it was like either you get five thousand dollars or you get from. In California skate parks would build you something for ten thousand dollars. It was like you get those two options, and I was like, I'll definitely make the five thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, good call. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, then we start doing those commercials, and it's fun with Street League. Um, a lot of my friends actually work there, so it's not like I'm doing these random commercials with people I don't know. It's like Daniel Duarte. Oh, yeah, LRG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, his, his brother. So Daniel worked at LRG too. Oh, that's yeah. right. But did you get the chance? Yeah, his brother was a team manager, Jesse. That's right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um. So Daniel, it's just fun to work with him, and he's got a really good eye for. And he's funny as hell. So like, he's really good eye of like putting things together. And I think we started doing those. And I was like, oh, this could be a thing. It's fun, you know. It's mm-hmm. just fun to do and whatever. Yeah. But the first one we did, I remember we did it at um, Drama's house. You know he's uh yep. he's got a podcast and everything. He's yep. on Deer Deck Show. Uh, we did it. He let us do it at his house, and that was a fun one to do. And people were stoked on it. But I remember Malto hitting up Duarte and be like, "Hey, dude, is like, Kelly, who's Kelly's contractor?" For <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "It's definitely not my house, dude. <laughs> it's yeah. like a ridiculous house. Yeah. Drama's house he, is probably so they pretty make insane. These, these commercials, if you're unfamiliar, where he basically mm-hmm. is just like." He's like, I won trick of the year last year, like, and he's balling. He's got all this money. He's in a mansion. Oh, like, gotcha. look at everything changed for me. And so, yeah. kind of like, you get a, I don't know if you get out of a limo or something. What is it? I like had a limo, and yeah. then I just, it's a different one every time. And then mm-hmm. the latest, I think the one that was last year was my favorite because I just did it when it was like quarantine or like whatever, like COVID situation. Just did it at my homie's house. He's got a really nice house down the street, and he's got a Porsche. And, my, and Duarte brought his Porsche, and we got DeLorean to come. And it was just like, we just kind of made it happen with like three people, you know? And it's just fun what you can do with your friends that just, mm-hmm. that are ta- like, that's some talent right there with, with Duarte, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's just cool to him. I don't know. Absolutely. I want to run back to just team manager talk a little bit because I think that's pretty interesting. You're the TM for, at, well, a bunch of brands, but let's just talk about S specifically because I've seen yeah. you at Soltech because 32 uh, is a Soltech brand as well in Etnies. Yep. Um, and so... You know, when I look at the team, it's, it's everybody on their fit. Like it's, it's like kind of fresh dudes for lack of a better word. You know, um, it just kind of, it just kind of works. Like everybody's got the right flavor. It fills a perfect little niche in the, in yeah. the industry. They look right in the shoes. Like how do you go about picking a team as a team manager? Well, I kind of look at it the same way I went through it where I, only companies I work for and ride for is like I really like them or love them, you know. But I grew up riding first, but I loved S and DC. I love DC too, those two shoe brands. But S means something really special to me. And when I look for riders, I, I or I just if they're down or not, you know what I mean? Like somebody like, oh, how much are you gonna offer me? It's like some like you know the great example is TJ Rogers. Lately, he's on fire, dude. Yeah. And a while back, he's like, yo, I'm down to skate some shoes. I don't know. And I was like, hey, honestly, I, I don't really have anything for you if you're expecting something. He's like, dude, I just want to skate the shoe. It's it. Like, you know, so I started sending him shoes, and I, I had nothing planned for him. And then he just kind of developed. He started, you know, he just, he he loves, I could tell he loved it, and he put it in his work. And we're like, I'm like, dude, I got to put, I just have to put this dude on now. Mm-hmm. Even two years, two years, if I would have told you two years ago I was going to put TJ Rogers on the team, I, I would never have thought that, but he is works so hard and he skates so well and he just fits, wears his shoes and looks good that I got, we I just had to make it happen. But that's kind of like Wade Disarm, a good friend of mine. He's like kind of a legend in my eyes. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, and I've known him, me and him came up together. We're both like the same age and for KO and he was super down to ride for us right away. Like, you know what I mean? Like not a, no money right now. Like just give me the shoes. I want to try them out. And I was like, dude, this, and he was like kind of, on a comeback as well, I feel like I want to call it, I want to call it a comeback, but he started like just skating really fucking good and posting shit and having video parts. I was like, this could work. You know what I mean? Dude, um, he doesn't give you much, but every time he gives you a little morsel of a clip, you're like, oh fuck, that's like a almost an NBD or some crazy shit you never seen. And it's, it's like unreal. he does it beautiful yeah, too. Absolutely. It's a style. You're just like, how do you do it that good? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like thinking of like a Gino Iannucci. Yeah. Or Iannucci. Um, I look at it like that. Or yeah, you, you get a little here and there and then it makes you really stoked you know mm-hmm. um tom asta like he's just incredible on a skateboard right um yeah schmatty i've known him for a long time 
su- like super talented skater. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's interesting too because everyone's like, oh, why don't you have a bigger team or this or that, whatever. I'm like, dude, it comes down to money too. Like, it's not like we're, we're this huge brand that has money to buy people. That's how Nike came in. They came in and they bought people. And, and, and to be honest, like Nike's dope. Like they have dope shoes. But like, remember they tried to come in a few times and people were not having it. And then, so they came in and got the right people. I had to pay them a good amount, you know? And with S, it's just, you know, there's money, but it's like, it's a really passionate brand. And people that like look at it, like they love it, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's kind of, S, there's a lot of love behind that brand. Absolutely. You know, so. you know what's cool too is when I look at, well, uh, a lot of times you look at a team and you're just, there's like kind of a, a random slew of people on the team. You got like a big rail guy and you got like a, you know, in snowboarding too, they just kind of like pick random people. They want to check a box. Friends and, yeah. and put them on a team and you can, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work, but it's cool. Like when you get them all a, together, you can tell It, it almost seems like there's a brand direction or identity or something yeah. like that. That's always well, cool. It's weird because when Nike came in and started doing that, um, and same with Adidas, I'd say mm-hmm. too. And I'm not even, not even knocking them or any way. I'm just saying it became less special because like you're saying, you're like, oh, there's dudes all over the place. But mm-hmm. like, yeah, there's no real, like, they have different types of skaters all over the all over the board, you mm-hmm. know? And I think that was special back in the day, like seeing S in DC, like there were special dudes that, and they all were like skated together and they looked dope. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now it's just not, it's kind of, it's not really there for the, the bigger brands, but that was a cool thing going through our generation mm-hmm. was seeing that. I'm sure Manic snowboarding. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Growing up with that, that's got a great rich history as a footwear brand and yeah. all that stuff. It's like there was, a, the teams were, more focused and special, I'd say, back mm-hmm. then. I think a good one now is, like, primitive. They yeah. have, like, really, really good dudes. And they're somewhat similar, but they're all different, mm-hmm. right? They, every time yeah. they put somebody on, you're like, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So it's pretty cool. But yeah. you got a Patreon question? Yeah, I got question? a Patreon question along the lines of what we're talking about. Um, this is from Joshua Elliott. What's the in-house relationship like between 32 and the footwear brands at Soltech? Good question. So I haven't been in there in so long. I just work from home. Oh yeah, COVID. Oh, yeah. COVID. COVID times. Um, so I don't really even like. It. There's all everyone works in their own kind of segments. You know what I mean? Like I go in there, I work with Don Brown and maybe the photographer. This guy Sam Olson. Mm. Give those guys air horns. Is that the yeah. dude who shoots all the sick product stuff? He's a yeah. great. Yeah. And and all, the, all the catalogs too. And Sam, shout out that Sam Olson. Yep. He is He's even like. Even like uh, Oliver Barton, he was like, "Yo, Sam Wilson is one of the the best product photographers I've ever seen." Absolutely, and I, he kills it. He's sick. Yeah, uh, I don't. It's it's everything's cool in there. I don't really. I, I might see things here and there, but I don't ever inject in anything. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like I know Brian Cook, like, yep. but I I don't give any input because I don't know anything about. I'm not yeah. a big. Inf- I'm not a, that. And like I'm, I don't know a lot about snowboarding. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. So, but all the other brands cool. Like you see like the Etnies dudes in America and the 32 guys and it's cool. It's a, it's a really good feeling there. And it just, it trips me out to work there. Cause I grew up as a writer going in there and you're like, Whoa, this place is crazy. And then back then they had like all the warehouses. Did you go like way oh, yeah. back? They had the kickflip machine and yeah, like the, dude, they jumped down the stairs. They has like a pat, like a thing with the impact measuring what thing was on the, the stairs. Kickflip machine. You want to explain the kick? It was like basically oh, it was yeah. like it was it was like a foot and it and it basically hinged and it would flick a board and they'd put a shoe on it and I think they it would flick the board like a hundred oh, times like and it was like it a wear test shoe. like a wear yeah. test machine yeah yeah that, that and then they had the TF. TF oh my sick. god! I remember going there just Andrew Reynolds like I was there for like a thirty two thing and yeah. it was just Reynolds and Jetski I believe his name is is that the what old the America team manager or something I, um, his name. I don't remember his name but. Uh, there's a few. <laughs> but of them. I he, can't the remember. guy with the slick back hair, bigger dude. I can't remember his name, but he Jeff uh, Henderson. Yes, okay. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He uh, basically just just Reynolds skate in the park, and I'm just like losing my shit, like just <laughs> s- trying to roll around and like slap you a and crooked grind, <laughs> like and act like everything's cool. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. So that's, yeah. That was cool though, because you can go in there and be like, oh, there's Sheckler, there's Reynolds, or mm-hmm. fucking what? Like you know, like it was crazy to go in there as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, to go in there now is even just as cool, like. Just seeing the history of, because they they do a good job when you walk in you see all like the history of the shoes and stuff mm-hmm. like that it's really rad and then and Pierre one great thing dude. you know and another side side uh, sidebar if you look at Adidas or you look at Nike like they're they're pretty giant corporate like entities here where you take 
at Easy America S32. It's owned by Pierre. Yeah, yeah just Pierre yeah. is a skateboarder and a snowboarder at heart. Yeah, still goes, does it. And still like, does, goes to the events now and stuff like yeah. that. Like I saw him at Red. He was I. I almost went to the Red Bull one in in Paris. I couldn't mm-hmm. make it. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's cool. What's really rad is that when I go to work at all the brands that I do, I'm working with a skateboarder and they understand what we're we're doing. Because sometimes. Like, you know, you go to a bigger company, the higher-ups don't understand yeah, they don't what your work. process is, whatever, you know? So I think that's kind of a cool thing. That's actually an amazing thing that a lot of people don't have. Yeah. Because I hear people that work at certain places, they're like, dude, this sucks. I have to do this. I have to do that like, because of protocols they have, you know? And they have to spend a lot of time just explaining why they're doing what mm-hmm. they're doing. Yeah. That a skateboarder would just get or a snowboarder would get. Totally. And that's the worst. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for a good little segment of the show. Name that video part. Even that video part is presented by the Icon Pass. Okay, Buzz, I think we got a big winner coming up. I think you're going to want some season passes. Yes, and you are going to want the Icon Pass. Absolutely. If you want to not lease the Stoke, not rent the Stoke, but own the Stoke, you're going to want an Icon Pass. They got over 45 destinations all over the world. Yes, nine countries and also 15 states in the U.S. And five continents. Heavy. You can go all over with this thing. It's great. And it doesn't matter if you're a good boarder, great boarder, just starting. The Icon Pass is great for all ability levels. Uh, Make sure you head on over to IconPass.com and pick up your pass. And uh, I know that the prices go up October 15th, so you're going to want to do it soon. And how much are these bad boys going for, bud? They're going for 429 USD for the adult pass. That's a great deal. Again, head on over to IconPass.com to pick up your pass. Pass and have a season of Stoke. You'll be the owner of the Stoke. Again, not the leaser, not the renter. You'll be the owner of the Stoke. It's kind of the American dream. Everyone wants to own their own Stoke. Let's, Absolutely. Let's get out there and own the Stoke. Iconpass.com. So, uh, Kelly, name that video part. It's a segment of the show for us uh, video nerds. And um, how, how's your confidence level, 0 through 10? I, I'm nervous, but I feel like 10. Yeah. But like, I'm I nervous. Like that. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> that might be our first, That's our first 10. 10. That's our first 10. Like, yeah, I'm really, oh. I'm a skate. Is this going to be a skate one? Skate. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was so about like, maybe I, not that. I think I should have gone harder on you. I, I, I think it's a little bit. Uh, if he's throwing a 10 out. If he's throwing a 10, I might have blown it. But we yeah. might have a part two after that could be good. <laughs> um, I could not know it. So, uh, but I'm. I'm okay. usually pretty pro. I'm that, like, that's what I did as a kid. You know what I mean? Watch skate videos. Yeah, but oh, that song. I remember that. Okay, here we go. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he needed. I was yeah. in that video too. Yeah, so that that, was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, a lot of the a lot of the, the snowbirds we have on, they, like I, I got to give them like meatballs Complete because they just meatballs. they just they're you know we want to make them look good. Oh, by the way, you get you get some. So explain who that is. Oh, Wade DeSarmo. It was a guy we were talking about earlier. Rides for S and Primitive. But uh, that was from the DGK. I I won that. Yeah, this is what you won. Bomb Are you serious? <laughs> bomb hole cooler. So tight, dude. It's filled with bomb hole merch. Uh, what? Yeah, you got yourself a uh, bomb hole <laughs> mug, some dude? stickers. I think you got some bomb hole shorts. That's probably why you made it easy. Because you want me to you Yeah, want me to we want to give you everyone. Yeah. Yeah. That would be merch. weird if you just stumped everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it looks like well, you're you, not getting the cooler. You, you would have won this. We <laughs> actually <laughs> only have one cooler and we yeah. never give it out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. oh, thank you. That's awesome, dude. That's super cool. And then we do a little part two. Uh, this is for the the listeners. They know the drill. It's a snowboard part, so I'm guessing cool. we'll get it. But uh, they basically they'll uh, comment on Instagram if they know the answer when your episode comes up. Okay. And they get a chance to win a little prize pack. No coolers. That's only no for coolers. the guests. That's basically put it next to your trick of the year award. It's yeah, kind of like uh, just as prestigious. So I'm putting some cold ones in there. There too. you go. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> So that was name that video part. Appreciate you guys playing. We like that little segment of the show because it kind of like it kind of we, we get a lot of messages from people listening. They're like, "Oh, I went back and I've been watching old videos and stuff, yeah. and like kind of preserve the culture of like I still hold on to that like that video part being important. You it know, is. it's it's like." It's important for the culture of the sport in snow and skate, I think. And it shows, like, as a person who you are, you're, you're skateboarding, you know? Well, I have another, uh, kind of along those lines, uh, Scott Stevens, he 
you probably met him over at Soltech when we come through with 32 stuff, but uh-huh. um, I asked him for a guest question, and he's a big fan of the Nine Club. Big oh, listener. sweet. So here he goes. Hey, Bomb Hall. What's up, guys? This is uh, Scott here. I have a question for Kelly. Kelly, um, I grew up on all the foreign ones like yourself, so uh, my question is, what issue was the S South Africa road trip? Thanks, guys. I have a feeling you might know this. Okay, so I think in my head... I for some reason remember the colors are kind of similar, but I'm gonna. S- I think it's 27. Wow, I I don't know the correct answer the to answer. be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think he, it's 27. He didn't give you the answer, huh? I think it's 27. Okay, we just did a little uh, fact check, and uh, Kelly's correct. It was 27. Wow, Actually 27. You got it. Yep. Yeah, we, that's impressive. Yeah, uh, I I've watched them so many damn times. You know, and it was like that's when Birdquist drops in with bare, he barefoot drop in on this mm-hmm. ridiculous ramp, and then uh, Krager does nolly hard flip late flip. I know it's just a rad little thing, and um, I believe yeah, Krieger's on there. I want to say Muska's in there. See, yeah, it was student of the game right here. Yeah. So the guy who submitted that question, Scott Stevens, I've known him since I was in high school, and. I used to be super into smoking weed when I was in high school. Didn't watch any videos. Kind of thought it was cool to, like, not know anything about snowboarding. I was yeah. like, yeah, I don't fucking know. I just kind of, like, bust moves, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And then Scott's like, dude, did you see how he filmed that, like, you know, back lip from the other side of the rail and how it looked, how the thing went over the fisheye? And, and so I started, Scott got me really into, like, watching videos. And then I, it kind of clicked, like, Oh, like it's cool to be like it's cool to know about this. It's yeah. cool to be, a, and and I, it seems like you had a similar upbringing too, where you just like nerded out on the videos too. Nerded out super hard, and then like, yeah, it's where like looking through magazines, and I would be like, "Who shot that photo?" You know what I mean? Like, and you'd be like, "Oh, Atiba shot this," or whatever. You're like, "Oh, that's," tight. and then you would, I would go out and be like, "Oh, that's a Atiba dude." Like that would shoot the photos, and same with like video too, and like. Like, that's how I discovered a lot of music as a kid was, like, seeing, like, the foreign ones, they pop up. I, the first time I heard uh, Mo Money, Mo Problems, uh, Biggie song. Great song. It was in a foreign one chaos. I never had heard that song, but it pops up, and it says the name right there. And mm-hmm. I was like, I went and bought that album immediately. Mm-hmm. And I was in sixth grade, I nice. think. Nice. Yeah. So I remember, like, that just opening my eyes to a lot. Of, I, mean, I didn't really get engulfed in the music culture, but it oh, led me to music that motivated made me motivated to go skate and do whatever. did you ever drive around listening to the four in one intro theme song i don't think i did that people would be like what the fuck's he listening to <laughs> even if you knew it was that you're like why are you listening to that <laughs> but that's getting hyped to skate yeah, i try oh, i asked josh uh Friedberg, Friedberg that i'm like how did you choose like that's the randomest song but it's perfect it's perfect yeah. like that's weird to find mm-hmm. that song right yeah. but um yeah i don't know so yeah Watching the skate videos, it, it it took me because I was I grew up playing sports. I was full on jock mode, like a basketball, football, baseball. Like freshman year, going into freshman year in high school, it's called like what do they call it? Like suicide week or something? I don't. Know oh what. yeah, yeah, getting ready. The yeah, week yeah. Before or something. I was going baseball. I can't remember the order. It was football in the morning, basketball, then baseball or something. Every single day in the summer. Every single day, and I get home and I'd skate. I don't. I, if so the I kid's did, an athlete. He's, yeah, like, he's an athlete. That's madness. And like that was. Just, I didn't think about it, but I was just like, all I wanted to do was really skate, you know. Um, but then I realized that skateboarding was really more of my thing. Uh, that it, I could do it when I wanted. It was really cool. I could like the music and these videos were really cool. And there's some way you could make it sponsored and do something with it. But I realized what was funny it was like my mom and dad supported me so hard through skating. But a weird, interesting part of me starting to get into skating and, like, quitting sports was that, like, I didn't realize my mom was, like, super bummed on me quitting sports. And I didn't understand it. And this sounds uh, – I totally understand now. But, like, she really wanted me in, in, in my community, like, working – and, like, the hanging out with the other kids that I was going to school with and, like – her hanging out with their parents too and go to these events. Oh, yeah. And she was like, Yeah, like when your sister did that, like, like it was really fun for me and her as well. But now, like, you're just doing your own thing and I don't get to be in part of it. And like, I was like, I, I understood that now. You know what I mean? But um, at that point, skating kind of just took over. Mm-hmm. And I, she was like, I don't understand what you're going to do with it, but if you love it, that's fine. It sounds they, like a supportive. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Supportive I think mom. at that point, they did. 
my, I mean, I came from a pretty, you know, like good, like well off family. You know what I mean? Like my dad's an ER doctor, mom's a, uh, a nurse, and my sister, dude, sister, oldest sister's a lawyer. Her husband's an orthopedic surgeon. My middle, my other older sister, she's a periodontist, which mm. is like a dentist. Damn. Her husband's an oral surgeon in an ice skate. And yeah, yeah like that's sick. Kind of that's tripping at first. That six yeah. k yeah. a year is not stacking up yeah. so good next to them. <laughs> next to any of those. You guys are talking about uh, <laughs> fiscal income, but, but imagine that though. They're like, they're like kind of that's tripping him because they're like. He's not really do, making that much money, but he loves what he does, and he's kind of getting known off of it, though. Yeah, he like, sure is happy. He, like, he's stoked. He doesn't know. Like, that's why I'm really glad I never knew about money when I was a kid. Like, I, like I was telling you guys earlier, I got my first credit card when I was 30 years old. 35 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I didn't, I never looked at money like that until, as of recently, seeing the world as it is, like, I was just in my own world, like, skating, it's all that mattered. I got paid 2,500 bucks a month. Mm -hmm for my, the highest of my skate career mm -hmm. and it didn't matter to me but i you, never cared you, it seems like you did it because you loved it yeah, i did and that happy, shows. Right? super stoked and then nothing else mattered and i i would hear what other people would get I'd be like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> i like Dude. didn't know that was a thing i thought they all lived their mom's house too like, <laughs> <laughs> well going going back to that too like when when you look at where where you come from and where you're at it seems like it really shows because a lot of people they'll be like, "All right, I want to make it as a snowboarder." You see this, and and everybody's circumstances are different, you know. But but you you try to make it, and you want to make it, and then if if they don't ever make it to that level, like they 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 get resentful and bitter and leave the sport yeah. and just are like, "I'm done with this," and you know somebody such and such fucked me over, or whatever. You know, you see that a lot in yeah. in our in our industry, and yeah. and so it seems like for you, you just like. I love this shit, whether I'm getting paid or not. This is, these are my people. This is what I do. I skate. I love skating. And it's led you to this past where you're, you have your, you know, your name on a board. You made a career skating. Now you're just because of your passion for skateboarding, you're the host of the nine club and yeah. you're the team manager for three companies and you judge the biggest event in skateboarding. <laughs> and it's all, the, all just because like, to me, when I look at it from a bigger picture, it's like you're passionate about it. You love it. And, and just, you stuck with with it and i'm sure you're beloved in the skate community because of that right i don't i mean i'm i'm just i'm re, i'm i'm really grateful to be here like yeah. i trip out when i look at like where i was at and stuff mm -hmm. like that and i'm like i think about that a lot but just i i look back at like i'm like dude i have a car like that's <laughs> nuts like you know what i mean like i never thought of myself like to be able to do any of anything that adults did yeah. you know i always thought of myself as a little kid and never and then i I was like, dude, I'm an adult. Yeah. I can do these things. I'm not. I'm, I'm limiting myself. I limited myself a lot as a skater. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so I'm just really grateful to be here. And I do remember, like, well, this is like 2008, because I was such a fan of skateboarders and the, what they did, or what they brought to the table. I'm like, it wasn't my idea at all, in any means. But like, I was like, it would be so sick if there was a fucking skateboard talk show. You talk about, ask about, uh, what was it like skating Pier 7 back in the day? Yeah. Shit like that. I was like, that would be so sick if they someone actually did that. Mm -hmm. And then, whatever, it, how long, 2008? Jesus, it's yeah. 13 yeah. years later. It's like, I'm actually doing that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm with my friends that I grew up, like, I, like as a kid, big fan of Chris Roberts. Roger, I always look in the mid of uh, foreign ones. He did the audio video. He was in the credits all the time. Like, I know who Roger Bagley is. That dude's a fucking great filmer. Yeah, and like now, and then Jerron Wilson. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, that's one of my favorite skaters ever growing up. So to like to actually sit down and work on this podcast with him. Um, I, and I, like I said, it wasn't my idea. Roger and Chris really was like, let's do this. And it was, I really look back at how funny it was to see it kind of unravel because there was no plan behind it on my, from my standpoint looking at it, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember... I, th I might have said it a few times. I can't, I don't know. But I remember being like, uh, I just got back from Japan and I was sleeping on my couch. I was super just out of it, like jet lagged. And Chris was over there and they were like, he was getting footage from him from like throwback Thursdays. Like, hey, let me get some old clips so I could post it up. And they started talking like about this talk show or like this podcast they wanted to do. And I was like, I was like, dude, you guys are so loud. I was like, I just went in my room and I shut the door and they knocked on the door like, Kelly, come outside. I'm like, what? Like, we're gonna do. We're starting a podcast. You're you're gonna be our first guest. And I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> like, they just sent up the room. There, there's a pilot out there. Like, I think Roger has it somewhere. But it's fucking funny to look at, where it's like, this our old tables like sideways in the room, and they're just like GoPros and like whatever and like shitty lighting, and it's like us just t 
just freaking yapping for like 30 minutes. You know what I mean? And then like, and then I believe that Eric Longden, who actually filmed Mike Moe's part back in the day, he has amazing videographer. He saw what Roger was putting together and he's like, dude, you got something here. Like I'm down to help you guys out. And he had more cameras they could bring in. And then we came back uh, a couple months later where they kind of perfected what they wanted to do. And they brought me on as the first guest. Again, we redid it basically. But at that point it was like, I got trick of the year. I got back on expedition. I was doing all these things. So like, it was a perfect timing for that too. And then I don't know. I don't so, know so how the hell. We're my, fucking, my, my question is, is like, so when you, all right, you guys are filming this, this, this episode, episode one of the nine club. Yeah. Right. And you're, you don't know what the hell's going to happen. It's, this show is nothing at this point. Yeah. Doesn't, there's no, nobody knows what the nine club is. Yeah. You put out episode one. What happens? I remember I was at Tom Asta's house in Philly when the first episode went up and we filmed it and I was super stoked to do that. Like that was cool. Um, and it's only 30 minutes long and people were like, Whoa, this is kind of cool. Like at that point, like, you know, even like Thrasher and like, you know, um, the, uh, the skateboard bank, maybe at that point, I can't remember, but like back at other websites were like, Oh dude, check this out. Putting the nine club stuff on there. Like, Oh, check out this new little interview show that Chris Roberts is doing. Um, and it kind of just at that. So I was just the guest and I was, uh, I think <laughs> I kind of made Chris, I, I, Chris kicked me out one time cause since I lived in the house and I, and you like, like I was saying earlier, it'd be so cool if there was a skate pod or a show where they talked about skaters, they're having these skaters come over in my living room and they're talking about skating and I'm just, I live there. Yeah, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm sitting in the, I'm sitting in the kitchen, like watching. And I'm like, yo, dude, what about that? Like, that's you know, how you eventually got on the yeah, show. Exactly. Huh? You were basically there. I was anyways. bugging the shit out of him, but I wasn't trying to get on the show at all. I was not. Yeah. I was like, this is cool. You guys are doing something fun. Like I, lo I really enjoy talking about skateboarding with some of my favorite skaters. Mm -hmm. um, in your own house. In my <laughs> own house. Yes. So I uh, didn't Chris, I don't know I forget who it was. It was either P Rod or like Blake Johnson, maybe. But he was like, "Kelly, you, you got to get out of here. Like, you got to leave. Like, you, I cannot have you with no microphone over there talking. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like if someone yeah, right here was like, yeah, yeah. 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 He was like, this is insane. And so that's when I remember he called me up after like a few weeks later and was like, hey, I got an idea. I got this button. I want you oh, to, the button. The yeah. button. But that it was a funny thing because we, Chris didn't really know. We, we, we kind of talked about this the other day. As you know now, our, some people might have seen the, I just don't use a button anymore. Yes, I know. I, I did just happen recently. Yeah. <laughs> I, I literally told Chris, I was, we're filming three times a week now. I'm like, Chris, dude, I'm super sorry to say this. But I, I can't do it anymore. Well, you had bro. to use the button every time you talk. <laughs> yeah. <every> time. <laughs> and it was like five years of that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a lot, yeah. dude. Like my fingers are strong as yeah. shit. I but almost like, thought the button was fake at first, because but you really no, had to was, touch it. It was yeah. real, yeah. dude. What and it would just a light would go up. Yeah, or? it was like a real red, and when you put it down, it was green. And it was so like, was like, but it was right, so. Kelly wants to talk. He he killed it, dude. He made it so ill, like <laughs> this ill little button that actually worked. I could tell he's really proud of that. <laughs> he, I, he was for sure. So it was cool. And that's what's really rad with Chris is like he's really. I see his passion for what he does like obviously the end result but like the little the little yeah. things you know like the button that's what's fun about having your own show you yeah, get yeah to do the dumb shit like that like like all these like when you guys set this up like oh this is sick and we finally got this oh, like yeah. <laughs> like the microphones the head, like all that stuff i see that in him i don't have that like i just i don't do that role like that's like his show and he he does it so good but it's fun because he's like learning just like you guys you mm -hmm. know what i mean but yeah so I just, I just, I can't do the button anymore. Yeah. But uh, how did he take that? He, he. What was funny is that, and I understand this. He's like, I wasn't really trying to fuck with you, like by giving you the button. It became a funny thing on the show. Yeah. But he's like, he didn't know how. What he wanted at that point was like to talk to the guests and not it be some crazy shit show where everyone's trying to talk and come in. Because he's like, if I put Kelly over there, he loves to talk. He's just gonna be ch like talking all the time. So it's like if I give him the button, it might restrict him of like how the conversation flows. But now over five years, yeah, you know when to be quiet. We know and, we yeah. have the whole flow. Like it's done. Like mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Like and I told he's like, yeah, no, it's I didn't even think about it. But yeah, you're all good, dude. Like you don't have to use that thing. <laughs> like he was that was why he started that button though. Mm -hmm. And he always he's a big fan of um, Howard Stern. Mm -hmm. So he he liked to like you know the, the dude in the back was a Baba yeah. Booey has yeah. a button. He just like liked incorporating certain things you know mm -hmm. that he liked for other things. So how is well, it? Go ahead. There's nothing worse than listening to a podcast where you hear the 
the host talk more than the guest and just, yeah that's like the worst thing ever so for sure I'm sure that's part of the reason he had the button too you know yeah i mean and I, I trip out because a lot of people know him from like me laughing all the time and i generally just like to laugh i think it always makes me i, I always say that to people I'm like yeah fucking if you dude how many times have you laughed so hard at something it just changed your day oh 100%. that's the thing it's uh yeah it's yeah. like it's infectious it, it's, is. it really is and I, I i love laughing like that hard especially if i'm like crying it's the best thing in the world mm -hmm. um but uh i it was funny to think about that i literally would hold the button down to laugh yeah, like uh, hold it down to laugh. And yeah, because but it came down to the point. Yeah. It came down to the point where everything that came out of my mouth it was this instinction to hold the yeah, button that's down. That's a good point. Yeah, it was just weird that uh, and autopilot. And, uh, and it would have sounded, to be honest, it would have sounded weird if I didn't did that, didn't mm -hmm. do that, because then in the you would just faint laugh in the background, and I'd be like, I did hear from Chris and Tim that they're like, dude. It's amazing. We're actually really stoked that you laugh a lot because it makes it easier editing wise. Yeah, and I was like, "Awesome!" Didn't know that was a thing, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I guess for editing purposes, it makes it easier. Good, good place to cut wherever you need to. Yeah, so. yeah. So I was like, so, "Oh, cool." So how is it being on the other other side? You're normally yeah. asking the questions. How, how are you feeling? How's it I stacking feel, you, up on you that side? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you guys are great. It feels awesome. Just uh, kind of just it's it's almost like therapy because I, I when people come on our show, I'm like, "Hey, it's literally like therapy. You're gonna go through your life." Yep. And you're going to remember things you forgot about, maybe, mm -hmm. you know? And you kind of zone out, and then next thing you know, it's like, what, it's been four hours? Mm -hmm. What? You're like, yeah, exactly. dude, we're done. And like you're all tired after, too. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, it's fun. I really enjoy hearing their stories, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy because I have to give props to Chris and Roger so hard because they really work hard on the back end of that show when you, you – they don't just show up and things are ready to go. You know, Chris puts a lot of work behind the, the scenes. And, you know, he, he he's I could see him stress out sometimes because he wants to make sure everything's good. Or it's easy for everyone. But, like, you're figuring these crazy technical things out on your own almost, right? Mm -hmm. So he's doing a good job. Yeah, the, good, the, the funny thing is, like, it, it appears so professional. And it, maybe ours does at times, too, in some ways. But... I can assure you from the other side of that that we have no clue what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so like yeah, it's like learn you, as you go. You just figure it out. You know, Buds and I don't know what we're doing. We and just three come in shows here and a week. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I mean, it got to that point because like when COVID started, it started another show that Chris created called the Stop and Chat. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and then we do our live shows and the experience like literally live. Yeah. Uh, which is crazy. Just like you didn't go when I used to live there, like that room that I was sleeping on the couch when fucking watching. I was watching like uh, Phoenix Amherst. I don't know, whatever. But like I was watching some skate contest when when they started talking. And like that whole place now is just like a crazy studio. I was all like, I was impressed to walk in here. Like, it's just like this place, but it's at an apartment. Mm -hmm. and no know? one lives there. No one lives there. Because I mean, Roger, Roger lived there for 16 years. Wow. Yeah. So you guys got your merch and stuff in there as well? We did at first, and then Roger was, like, basically the warehouse manager, you know? And they he was shipping out everything. So And then now, like, Mike Mo, he does a glassy up in Simi Valley, and he has a warehouse there, and they do, like, Tori does uh, thank you skateboards out of there. And they do a couple other brands. I think Justin's company, 33, the number 33. So they when we get orders, it goes to Mike Mo's warehouse, and they send it, it out. Yeah, yeah. Sick, some nice. third-party action. Yeah, but it's, like, Again, it's like our friend. Yeah. Like skater like skaters supporting skaters, I guess. Like we say that in the show a bunch, but like Which is yeah, good. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I, you know what I also wonder too? This is a there's a common debate debate we get on our show because some of our shows are an hour, hour and a half, some are four, and we have so many people that are like, I wish they're longer, I wish they're shorter. Do you guys have any type of time restraint or anything or just do what you do? How does that work? Well, I I kinda could I don't know. Like I, I understand what you're saying for sure. Like like I was telling you earlier, like Danny Way came over. Yeah. I'm like, okay, we got to schedule this one earlier. We got to, we're, we're going to need some time. Yeah. Jamie Thomas comes, we're going to need some time. Yep. You know what I mean? I, if you're talking about me, like you're not going to need that much time, mm -hmm. right? Because those dudes have such big stories and so much so amazing. Long bullet yeah. 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 So like it's, there, you kind of <laughs> guess, I could like, you could name me someone. I'd be like, ah, oh, probably around this time. Yeah. Just because, no, and not even any disrespect. I just, you could tell like probably how old they are or what, mm -hmm. who they were. I, as me as a kid watching their mm -hmm. like career, I could be like, oh yeah, probably be like three three hours. Dude, well you look at somebody is like you said their career. Like you have somebody that's nineteen years old. They've only lived on yeah, planet Earth for yet. nineteen years or something. Like you only got like 
15 bullet points or something of like yeah, yeah. topics. Whereas, you know, you take like, we've had Ken block on the show and he's done so much and those get like same deal. Long, yeah, long, have, long episodes. They got stories, dude. And yeah, younger kids and people are like, why don't you get the younger kids? I'm like, Oh, we, they just don't have a story yet. Yeah. And it's no, it's not even disrespect to them. It's just what well, our people that are listening to our podcast or the show, like similar to you guys probably are like dudes that are older and paid attention to these careers. Like I did, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, Danny way episode, they're, the older dudes are watching that. I am the younger too, like, you know, but it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's weird to know like how I, it's cool for me to like hit up these guests and do these things because I'll say like, it's a weird, perfect storm. Kind of like probably how it worked here. I don't know exactly how you guys did it, but it's like Roger being a filmer, a videographer dude that films like complex and all these things, high quality production that Chris, who knows all this podcast stuff. And then, Myself, who also do, we we all know people, but like I really engage with with the skate community. I talk to a lot of people, so like, hey, you want to come on the show? Blah blah. blah. Like we you all book have, all the guests for the yeah, people that aren't familiar. Yeah, yeah I, I I usually book all, I book all the guests, um, and just I reach out to them, or maybe maybe Chris Roger will connect me with somebody. Mm -hmm. But it's it's fun, dude. Yeah. It's super cool, and like I said, like I'm a huge fan of these skaters. So to like actually do this and like help be a part of it and be on the show, amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Now I got to ask, you know, cause similar experience, but coming from being a pro skater and now being like, you know, we'll say pro skater slash podcast host. It, it almost seems different. Uh, when people come up to you, it used to be like, yo, I love your, I love your like Nolly tray or some shit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And now it's almost like, yo, I know you, or I, I've, I, I almost know what do you find more rewarding is when, when you're talking to, to people that you've met that listen to the show versus like just fans of your tricks. Do you, is it more people from the podcast or more it's a skaters? Mix. I think yeah. I, the, it's weird. Like as me, Chris and Roger and you guys have probably like you get this new audience mm -hmm. and you get this audience that really, when you're doing a podcast, people are really listening in to you and they act like, and like they're learning, they're getting to know you, but you don't know them. So they come up to you and they're like, dude. And they think they know you. Like, yeah, yeah, And they're like, whatever. And you're like, it's just really cool. It's a different thing. Other people are like, dude, your Nolly trays are sick, dude, or whatever. You know, like, whatever. But these people have something to actually talk to you about mm -hmm. now. Because totally. they, they listen to you. They know you as a person. So it's, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. And then I think the coolest thing is the, the, the community you guys build. Like, and then, like, your community. Like, there's so many rad people in our, like, we call them old buddies. Like, and like there's like um Stumpy Mason and there's Ryan Kula and there's like Haku and there's all these people that go on our chat that like they they all know we, they're all friends because of the nine club. Oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? And you start seeing and it's like this really cool community and it's like mm -hmm. this is wild. Totally. Like <laughs> yeah. like so it, it's like a it's two different types of of I guess someone gives you like they're a fan or something mm -hmm. like that. It's like but I, I was saying this earlier like I wouldn't be on the talk show if I didn't do the skating mm -hmm. beforehand, yes. right? And same with right here, right? You, yeah. you guys put the the work in. Yeah, Eastone's a legendary snowboard photographer, yeah. so he's been, and before that rider, and so he, we we each have our different things we bring to the table. Same with you guys. It's like you're almost like the the skate, like you know all the stats, all the video parts, all the tricks. You know, everybody brings a different thing to the table. Which yeah, it's really cool for sure. It, it's like we would never planned this. Yeah, it just worked. And then I think, you know, it really took off for, like, that's like Chris and Roger. That's what they do. Yeah. Like, that's their job. Like, that's pretty wild. That's awesome. You know what I mean? So, and I, I, I have four jobs in that. Yeah. So, like. <laughs> that's uh, what psycho, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I always wanted, I, like I said, I remember when I was not doing shit. Like, so I was like, I'm really, people offer me some, like, yep, <laughs> super down. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just, you know, um, and I was doing mob and NHS or mob and Richter. I'm working with Cairo Foster. Like, I grew up loving his skating, too. So it's like, I'm, like, surrounded by all my kids. Like, as a kid, I'm, like, surrounded by all my heroes. Mm -hmm. and I'm working with them, right? That's so rad. So. Dude, one thing I think is really cool that you guys do, too, is, like, as a listener of your guys' show, like, take, we talked about it before we were on air, but take Andy Max episode, for example, or somebody like that. I always was kind of like, ah, oh, this guy's kind of, like, Vert guy, not my not my favorite skater. Yeah. Then you listen to him, you're like, dude, this guy's fucking awesome. Yeah. You know? yeah totally. It's always cool how you guys can can show a different perspective on somebody. You get to know, you know, we make these preconceived judgments on people where this person's cool or this person's whack based on whatever, you know. But then you get to meet him and you're like, dude, this guy's awesome. Right? Facts I are mean, most of them are cool, right? Yeah, <laughs> but like, yeah, you're back then it was so judgmental and like what they wore, what tricks they did, and what spots they skated or whatever, you know. And 
it's yeah now like Andy Mack like I never thought I'd ever engage in knowing Andy Mack. Me being a, like a ledge skater, him being a vert skater, like we we just never cross paths at a skate spot or anything, right? But uh, he comes on the show, awesome. And that, like we talked about earlier, um, uh, Steve Olson, the OG Steve Olson, called. He's like, "You, you look like fucking Andy Mack," and like it then it became this joke. And I'm like, I'm wondering if he's getting off- if Andy's seeing this on the internet, and he's get- if he's getting offended or not. But then I realized he was stoked. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, sick. Like I, I don't, I, t- I don't want to hate with the- anything. You know yeah. what I mean? For those who are unfamiliar, uh, basically Kelly uh, for Halloween put on the infamous yellow helmet and yeah. the pads and <laughs> and dressed like Andy Mac for the Halloween episode, and it was priceless. Oh, so. People, I was, I was, I kind of did that last minute too. Yeah. And uh, I was like, dude, I'm really glad I did that because that was it was fun. And I, and like he came through when he came for his episode, he brought we did this little skit. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was like something small. It's a while ago now. I it was like right. yeah, it was like 2018 maybe even 17. I don't know. Uh, he came on and he's like, hey, we're gonna do this little thing after we're done. I brought he had he brought the same outfit and he brought his helmet. He had brought some eight, ten and a half airwalks. I was like, I'm like, I'm a size nine, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, let's go outside and we'll do, uh, I think he's regular footed and I'm goofy. So I was like, I'm going to teach you guys how to do Nolly Trey. And we both wore the same gear mm-hmm. and then we like filmed him. And then like I faded it, like transferred it in. I did a fakey tray. It looks <laughs> Nolly. And it was like street back, like whatever. But like, no, it's fun. Like it was really, it's really cool to engage with these skaters mm-hmm. and fucking have them. Like I was saying earlier out there, I was like, it's really cool that you guys and like like I to me to be a part of the nine club to like have these skaters tell their stories to people like and give them that platform is pretty cool. Totally, yeah. Totally. And what, I, what's the story with this Twitch stuff you guys are doing and video game stuff? Oh, so like there's like a side like there's a show they do. It's called uh, Three Dudes One Game. No, you're not involved in that. I'm not involved with that, but. They have a Chris, dude, Roger's old room is now this new, like, Twitch room, like, live room. Chris, it's like a genius thing. I don't know. It's nuts. But uh, we go after the show on, what, the one I'm a part of is, like, after the shows, we'll go into the, on the experience show, we'll go into the Roger's old room, and we'll talk with the community. And we do it through, we were doing it through YouTube and Twitch, but I think Chris just wanted to focus on Twitch um because it's more of like an engaging they can all talk to you yeah anyone wants to. and like chris ended up all nuts it's like these crazy I've seen the screens. screens all over the place dude yeah. it's insane um they switched up a little bit now and now there's these huge screens we all look at one spot and there's two screens on the side and uh we just didn't we just hang out and talk and it's cool i mean you guys see like twitch is like this crazy big thing yeah mm-hmm. i'm so i'm so old i don't even know what's yeah. going on with that yeah. like a dinosaur over <laughs> yeah. here dog. well i learned uh, yeah it's i'm the same thing but they that's why chris is like learning about it too and he's yeah. deep diving steez is just like super into that stuff he knows all about it mm-hmm. so it's like I'm like wow this is pretty wild and we'll do these things at the end of our we'll just hang out literally what we do is what we did out there yeah we'll, we'll, we'll eat pizza we'll sit and eat pizza in the microphone and just talk to people Sick. Like, you know, and it's it's fun, whatever. Mm-hmm. But uh That's yeah, cool. We we do this thing at the end where Chris you can do this thing called raids, where that's when you you have your your chat and you're like, hey, I'm gonna find this dude's channel and we're gonna send all the people that are watching this one to that one because we're gonna sign off. And we do that to people and they uh, to see their reactions, they'll be like they start like crying and shit like that. Because like, you, you just got them all these yeah. people, the and whole like, community. And of I'm your like, community. dude, this is insane. Like sometimes they have no idea who the nine club is, but most of the times they do because we'll go like, "Oh, do a skater XL game." Guy was playing that, and just see their reaction is pretty wild. You know what I mean? That's cool. So it's that is cool. It's a cool community. I I did Twitch for a little bit where I would just sat in my computer and just mm-hmm. talk to people too, but I'm like, I can't do that. Yeah, you know? a lot it's of like, bandwidth. Too, yeah, you know? it's like just for an hour. I'm like, I have a, I have another question too because it's like this. I, I almost feel like for us, you know, we only do one show a week, and there's this like revolving door and which we love but it's this revolving door of uh of creating shows every single week there you know yeah. whereas like being a, a skater or snowboarder you kind of like go hard for a little bit take a break you can kind of but um yeah do you guys ever feel like it, it's a lot to to just kind of keep putting in effort every single week or you just what how does it feel for you i trip out because that's more of a chris and roger question okay. because like i have my other stuff mm-hmm. you know like Chris is just doing that, and I'm like, Chris, you should take some time off. And he's like, Dude, if I had to take time off, then I, I'm like, I'm not getting paid. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like it's not like that. You know what I mean? So that dude, and plus he loves it. 
Yeah, that's the thing too. Yeah. We, we tr- genuinely love it too. I just yeah. get, I just get curious about talking to somebody else in a similar situation. So it's yeah. Cool. I, have you met Chris before? I never have. No, no. I, I introduce you guys. I mean, he's great. Like yeah. just talked on this stuff because there is not a lot of people that you guys can really connect to on stuff. Well, like this. We feel like we're in the wild west where we're just like yeah. we don't know what it's like, kind of <laughs> uncharted. If you but if you look at the thing that's kind of cool with it is like you know we grew up on on magazines and and video magazines and videos and and it's kind of changed the 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 landscape i'd say has changed a little bit where where you used to just wait for the magazines now like in snowboarding we have hardly any magazines and so and and i think the way people you know consume their their content for back lack of a better word i hate that word but it's like you know the thing that's cool with us like with with what you're doing is is basically like you're educating a lot of the people about vert skating or it kind of strengthens the community in a way. Yeah. I think sure. you're, you're learning about the thing you're into. Cause like I, I do the same thing. I, I like motocross, right? I don't, mm-hmm. I'm not connected. I don't know anybody. I love dirt bikes. I listen to these moto podcasts and I'm like learning about like how they do their clutch lever. And you're like, yeah. and it's like same thing with, you know, asking people about like how they set up their board and stuff. And it's always so cool. What the cool, one of the coolest things to hear quite some time or quite often actually is like people like, yo, I haven't skated in like 15 years. Yeah. I started listening to your podcast and I got back into yeah, skating. Yeah, we get that Sick. too. Yeah. Like, I was, yeah. yeah, that's so, like that's a cool feeling. 100%. Dude. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is weird. I'm surprised there's not a lot more podcasts, but mm-hmm. I, I, at the same time, um, I, I'm like, I, I can understand why. Yeah. The process and the work that has to be done. People have tried doing other podcasts and they're like, fuck, this is, I mean, they Jamie Thomas, back, right? Jamie Thomas, like, was trying to do one for a while and I, think he's because he i think he got a good response from his nine club and he was like cool i like talking to people like whatever but i think i don't know exactly but i'm not actually just saying i'm saying as in, in general the you have to be consistent and work on this thing nonstop. and if you have other stuff going on like if i was to do a podcast and i had four or five jobs like it, if i was the only one doing it it, it probably wouldn't, wouldn't get out. it wouldn't work yeah. out so you have to be dedicated to it like you mm-hmm. guys have known like so yeah, it's just uh, consistency. Yeah, and I could see like people would want to start one and then they yeah shut down because they just don't understand that that it's not just like skip, get in a microphone and talk. Yeah, it, there's know? there's a lot more work that goes in behind the scenes. But still, yeah. if you're thinking about ma- making one, not to discourage anybody, just fucking do it. It's f- awesome. It's fun. Yeah. Um, with that being said, I think we should get into the liquid death spinning wheel of death. All right. Here we go. Welcome to the liquid death. 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 Spinning wheel of death. <laughs> so, uh, Liquid Death is one of our main sponsors. Uh, Eastone is over there chugging one as we speak. As is I Kelly. Need to reload. How is that thing tasting, buds? Empty. Oh, it's empty. <laughs> He's been putting. <laughs> you know, I got one right here. <laughs> I'll take one. Here. I'll there? tell you, we yeah, we I throw. Don't, I don't want to ruin anything. Yeah. There's nothing to ruin here. <laughs> we throw five or six of these back in episode. We do. The good thing about it is you're not contributing to the plastic. Uh, it's a great beverage. You can find it at 7 Eleven Whole Foods. Or uh, if you want to support us online, head on over to liquiddeath.com backslash bombhole. Again, liquiddeath.com slash bombhole and get a couple free koozies Ooh. and uh, support the guys that support us so we can keep creating that podcast. And uh, we're going to get right into the spinning wheel of death. I want to say something real quick. Shout, shout out Liquid Death. They sent me some water too. It's good, but I just like it's somewhat like skater owned, right? Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, yeah I'm like, dude, this Australian. is cool. It's like, yeah, I'm like, so I, I think it's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you basically you spin this, and whatever it lands on, uh, you're gonna have to do. So <laughs> sick. <laughs> Wait, can I see my options? Yeah. <laughs> you can, <laughs> but there's, we kind of rigged it. We kind of oh, yeah, rigged I'll, it. Actually, you know what? I'll look at it after. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. We kind of rigged it. Uh, give it, a, give it a so good, I, do I just, just yeah, give it a good spin. That probably wasn't that good, but. Okay, what does it say? Buddy? Smelling salts to kickflip. Oh. Okay, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have this product, uh, which is called Run Through a Wall Smelling Salts. We noticed uh, we were watching uh, playoff. I was watching some playoff hockey, and uh, me and my roommate Greg saw the the hockey players were basically cracking these these salts, and they basically just kind of they just kind of wake you up a little bit. Yeah. So we started doing them on the show as a complete joke, and then all of a sudden now we have uh, we have a smelling salt uh, side business, and uh, it's. Pretty much a joke. So, um, I, okay, I've never heard of this stuff until today. Yes. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Oh, okay. 
All right, here we go. Oh! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> fuck that. All right, uh, Kelly just killed it with the <laughs> kick, kick Manny, dude. I yeah, uh, I, I take me a, it takes me a long time to warm up. I'm not kidding. Yeah. So me to even flick my board right now, mm -hmm. if I had to skate for half an hour, it probably would look a little better. But mm -hmm. it's all good. That come, you know, I realize it comes with age. It takes us a little longer to get warmed up, but once we get going, it goes. We get go pretty, <laughs> we then, go pretty good, and then it goes down pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have quite as long. Yeah, maybe an hour or so, mm -hmm. two hours, and I'm done mm -hmm. after. Yeah. Yeah, I know that you you were talking about how your hips you've had some hip issues. Right? Yeah, I've had I have a hip impingement on both of them. Mm -hmm. Uh and this one, my left one, um just got so messed up over time, wear and tear that it just started hurting one day and didn't know where it was coming from. Cuz it's weird when you get hurt but you don't know how, mm -hmm. right? Like I can't skate anymore, but I didn't fall. Like yeah. you know what's going on here? And then Mikey Taylor came on our the Nine Club show and mentioned what was going on with him and how he had surgery. I was like, dude, I think I had the same thing. And then I literally did have the same thing. Wow. And he gave me, he gave a recommendation to his doctor. And then the doctor was like, yeah, you're way worse than Mikey's. Oh really? Damn. Yeah. You can't do anything without your hips too. That's like crucial. Yeah, like, it, was, it was really shitty because I could run full speed. I could ride a bike. I could freaking, I don't know. Do I could play basketball. I could do all these things. I couldn't skate. Mm -hmm. So one thing I couldn't do. That's crazy. Yeah. And I realized over time maybe why that it had done that because it was my left one. And my, they both have the same problem. But the left one, the way that I do switch kick flips and stuff, I realized that maybe that's what wore out the, the hip so much because I have this weird – I use my toes a lot when I do switch flips and, like, whatever, switch front side flips. And, like, my, the way that my, my leg kind of moves, I can see that's probably where – it got wear and tear. This that motion over and over and over and over for whatever fifteen years. Or yeah, the repetition. Yeah, it takes. I think I learned switch flips when I was like fifteen or so. I don't know, uh, maybe younger than that. But then doing it for that long, and then I think it just happened over time. And then doctor was like, "Yeah, your other one's fucked too." But <laughs> <laughs> we'll but, see you soon. Yeah, but I don't think I don't do that same motion on that side. So I think I'll be okay. But hopefully, it's hopefully ho hopefully it fucking holds out. Well, beautiful. We have a kind of a question that pertains to that. Okay. From, uh, I don't know exactly what his title is, uh, brand strategist, I believe, Don Brown. Oh, nice. So here we go. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? This is Don Brown. And uh, hey, Kelly, want to know, you got injured pretty badly with your hip probably about four or five years ago, I think it was. And you kind of, kind of progressed into a new person when you came through on that and you just got into this health kick. Even all the way down to today, like you're, uh, you're kind of pushing the whole skipping thing, and I know you dropped a bunch of weight, and just like your whole diet and everything has changed. And uh, I'm just wondering if you could share some tips with uh, the rest of Chris's uh, audience out there to see uh, if you got anything that could help them keep their uh, their riding going for many years to come. That's a good question. Great question, Don. Yeah, he, it's funny because that's the only time I've ever heard him sound serious. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, he's just nonstop yeah. jokes, and mm -hmm. it's like he gets business done. But he's like the funniest dude of all time. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's a good question. I think, I think I really found this out during COVID. I've always I go. It's weird. I I my weight fluctuates really fast depending on what I'm doing at that time, right? But I skating this isn't my outlet anymore for physical activity all the time i used to be able to get on my board skate all day every day seven times you know what i mean like it, it was all the time now i can maybe skate two times a week and feel good if i skate in the next day i'm toast dude my hips jacked ankles jacked like like everything so it kind of becomes in a weird th sometimes it's almost doesn't feel as rewarding if that makes any sense we're like I look, I dream about skating all the time, but like to go do it, it kind of seems like a mission on my, and it hurts. So I try to do it twice a week if I can, but I got into this jump roping um, during COVID because I couldn't skate and we we're just tucked inside all day. This is insane. And I saw Wade Asarmo doing it. Well, he's like, yeah, I'm going to jump and rope a lot and I lost a lot of, a lot of weight. And I didn't do it to lose weight or anything. I did it because I didn't have that love to do anything. Like I, that, the love I had, I couldn't do it. Like, I physically couldn't do it. And I, it was rad to do the talk show during this time because you could talk about it and whatever. But I couldn't physically do it. 
and I needed some tor- and the gyms were shut. I was going to the gym for a while, like doing like Nick Dompier put me in this little workout program, and I was like, I could like lift weights and do these things, and I lost weight doing that. But then I, that was shut down. So I'm like, what am I? I can't go anywhere. I'm not, I can't do the workouts without those things at my at my disposal. So I uh, saw a jump rope, and I was like, that's so weird. I like. I haven't thought about doing that in fucking 15 years. Like, uh, and then I got, I had this old one. I had, do these garage sales every now and then. I haven't done it for a long time. But my friend randomly had my old jump rope. We did a garage sale at his house. And I was like, oh, I'm going to take that back. And I used that. I broke it. Bought this new one. I looked online and it was like, cross rope was like this, this the first thing that popped up. And it was like a really high end, beautiful jump rope. And I was like, that's sick. It's a hundred bucks. Fuck it. I'm, I have nothing else going on. Like, I can't skate. I, and that one just broke. Like, I'll get one that looks like probably going to last for a while. I got that, and then it just felt different and better. And I started to just, I, I found this, like, I don't know. I started feeling like I was kind of skating in a weird way where I could, like, get, I could sweat it out. I wasn't sore after. I was having fun. And I'm, like, listening to music, and I'm in my own zone, dude. And, I can go to the beach outside. I think live right. I've been in Venice Beach, right by the beach. I can go outside, jump rope there, and it just kind of took out all this, like all the energy I was trying to find to put out, like through skating. I couldn't do it, so I started doing it through that, and it kind of just worked. I got obsessed in a weird way, where like it's fun to me, and then then I was like, damn, I'm getting kind of chiseled, dude. It's kind of crazy, and I'm not that dude. Like I'm really not. I, that's why I kind of find it fun to do it, and then sometimes I'll get really obsessed with it and be like, okay, I'm eating. Uh, intermittent fasting. Okay, shout out the jump rope dudes. I, uh, if you want to give yep. a little fucking, <laughs> <laughs> give an air horn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, my friend Dan Whitmer. He, he, I randomly was in Venice and I started finding out about jump roping through this YouTube channel, the Jump Rope Dudes. And I was like, oh, this is cool. That's how you do that. This the little t- t- like you know tips and here and there. I randomly go down to the beach where at the Venice Pier where I would work out and jump rope and they're literally there and i was like what the fuck are you and i'm like i, I was like tripping i was like yo <laughs> dude i have to go say what's up like i have to like i'm not gonna get this opportunity so i go up, i'm like dude i'm sorry to do this but like are you guys the jump rope dudes <laughs> and dan's all are you kelly hart <laughs> like, he's like dude i watch the nightclub all the time i was like oh shit it's fucking nuts i was like dude i just want to say thanks for all like you got me into this new thing and i'm really psyched to do it and i'm learning through you guys so i really appreciate what you what you're doing you know but I was just I was just stoked to say what's up to him, and I got more into it. And then now that dude uh, Dan hooked me up with the guys at Crossrope, and they sent me a free jump. I was like, I got. Oh, you're spons. I'm spons. Are you spons? I, are, 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 no, I would say I don't know how to say it because uh, they don't have a team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do. It's cool because the dude, um, this guy Surge that works there, he's like one of the owners, I believe. Um, and he's like, hey, dude, like, if you want to start reaching out to skaters, like, I'm down to send some skaters some jump ropes. And I was like, sent Wade Desarmo a little box. I sent Gino Iannucci a box. Oh, and send I'm like, out packies. Send out packies, send dude. Out pa- You're going to be a team manager. Yeah, team, dude. dude. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm down. Like, another TM job. Job Perfect. number five. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then, like, they gave me a little promo code to use. Oh, what is it? You want to give it a little uh, plug right yeah. now? <laughs> what's, the pr- what's the code? All, all caps, KHART10. KHART10. We get 10% off? 10% off, What's dude. the website? Crossrope.com. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah, go there. You, but like, it's you get ten percent off. You get ten percent off. That's what the ten for. Tens for. Ooh, 10? I might have to cop a rope. <laughs> cop a rope. Son. You got a VIP for twenty? Is well, that, the K hard twenty? Is that a, does that do anything? Well, dude, maybe I could give you a box. Dude. Oh, I buy some yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I give you a box. You know, I but love that. That's it, it. Is really cool to see. And then I started seeing. I started posting it because I was kind of. I think it's cool to kind of tell your story if you're going through a journey. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Like. That's what's kind of fun for me, and um, I was doing that, and I lost a bunch of weight doing it. I put some back on because I wasn't obsessed about it anymore. Like, I still love jump rope, but I'm not like, I would eat from noon to 8 o'clock. That's why the jump rope dudes kind of taught me, like, hey, if you want to eat from, like, the intermittent fasting. And so I would do that. It was really hard for me to do that at first because I'm like, I, I used to just crush cereal at night. Me too. Dude, like, you know, you, cereal, <laughs> yeah, literally? Yeah, I dude, it, dude. Dude, I, I had wife and I will both do that. And I, I can't do it. Like, and it's really bad it's, for you. It's, I wouldn't, I almost wouldn't say it's bad, but it just doesn't help, yeah. I guess. I don't know if that makes any sense. I, maybe it is bad. I don't know. But I realized I was like, okay, and I don't really like eating breakfast at all either. So, like, it was weird. I'd be really hungry at night. And then wake up in the morning and then not be hungry. Isn't that weird? Mm-hmm. 
Like, you know, what I, like, you were like, starving at night. Like, dude, I can't eat before I go to bed. Like, whatever. And now I, it's nothing. I don't get, if I'm hungry, I, I still doesn't really, I don't need the food. I can just go to bed. But I always thought that was weird that I would wake up in the morning and then not eat till noon and I wouldn't be hungry. Yeah, mm -hmm. I get like that. It's weird. But uh, yeah, and then I started just kind of like watching what I was eating and not calorie counting, but more of just like, okay, I need some lean meats and then get some rice or a salad. And not, I used to, like sometimes I'll binge eat and just like, you gotta eat like the pizza, just crush it, dude. Yeah, you know smashing I mean? some pizza. Sometimes that's just awesome. Oh, you know? absolutely. But if you get into a habit and doing that every single day, that's where like, and then I gained 30 pounds during COVID. Like I got chunky real quick because there's nothing to do mm -hmm. and i i couldn't skate because i physically i couldn't skate uh just that was in i didn't know what i, I couldn't go to the gym so i found the jump rope and that's kind of what brought me back into um do you, do you use the jump rope to warm up to skate sometimes yeah, yeah. uh yes a few like for like five minutes yeah but then sometimes i'll just like what do i want to do, do I, like i'll have a little break to go like in between like a meeting or something i'm like oh, do i just go work out or skate i'm gonna go work out Mm -hmm. And then I'm done with it. I'm not sore. That's so, sick. so if I'm skating and I, I'm done, I'm sore as hell for two days. But if I'm work out for 45 minutes, jump roping, I'm not sore at all. I feel great. I just sweated out everything and I feel good and I had fun. So it's like a weird thing that I'm kind of getting into. As, so as you get older, you, you've, it's it's fun. It's fun to find those things that you're as excited about as you were when you were discovering skating. Yes, right. Those things you gotta evolve. I mean, for some people I know, it is just skating and it never changes, mm -hmm. and that's fucking dope too. Yeah. But sometimes it is cool to be like a novice at something again. Yeah. You know, no, I, I see that like with Justin Eldridge. He has like a uh, a golf company. He does like a mm -hmm. clothing brand. And he's, it's the same thing for him. He found something that the same spark as the skateboard yep. did. And the skateboard spark is still there, but physically doing it isn't as much, mm -hmm. you know, but like I still go out and skate, but it's, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to go put out video parts like that. Cause I honestly want to work for the brands, make sure those things are, you know, doing okay. And you how, know, well, how are the tray flips feeling though? Tray flips. They're hit. That, they feel good. That's like <laughs> that's the one. That's what I'm stoked, dude. They're, like they're red hot. They're that, red that, hot. I wouldn't say that, I, but it's it's my favorite trick, and I'm so happy that I'm like with all the injuries I've had. Like switch lifts for me are like real. Like my, one of my favorites too. But with my hip, it kind of like you don't have to flick out as much with the tray too. Oh no, it's like yeah, more. it's super into warm up. Like mm -hmm. we did the whole thing with with the kickflip. That takes me way longer to warm up on. Mm -hmm. Like tray flip, I was like, oh, I could do that without warming up. And for so it's just the it's the most pleasant feeling trick. People are like, oh, you do only do tray flips. I'm like, fuck yeah, only yeah. do tray flips. That's the best feeling. It <laughs> feels good. When I dream about skating, uh, I dream about like the the catch of a tray. It's oh, like yeah. that feel. You know, you kind of like when you daydream about it. But the problem is, as as you get older, in my head, I'm sick. Like in my head, I am fucking ripping and then <laughs> and then i show up to the park and i go i haven't skated in a week and i go to try a tray and it's like fucking air bud golden retriever <laughs> like my feet all over the place unfortunately it does suck with skating how how you have to you have to spend quite a bit of time on the board to to maintain a level yeah you can't just get on the board and start ripping like you did two mm -hmm. months ago you know what mm -hmm. i mean um and that's like a hard thing i've had to deal with a lot through my career is being hurt and coming back from that and you're like dude I got to learn this all over again, mm -hmm. but it's, you don't think of it like that at that point. You're like, it's kind of exciting, but like if I had to do that now, I'm like, fuck, I have to learn this all over mm -hmm. again. It's just not as fun when you're older, mm -hmm. right? When you're young, it's all good, but dude, you know, with age, it only gets harder. Yeah. 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 And that's, what's cool about jump roping and the intermittent fasting. It's like, these are things you, you can do to like squeeze a few more years out. Totally. Right? And, totally. And, and you feel good. Like, dude, I've never been the dude to like walk around with my shirt off or anything like that. Uh, have a tan like whatever but like i went to hawaii uh, a couple like two three months ago and the whole time i was there no shirt on just felt <laughs> good like you know what i mean i was like i was just I was like, i'm that dude right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be that dude. i was gonna be that dude but yeah. it was it's like it's just something fun to do and there's a lot of like stuff going on in the world that's like just really crazy and I couldn't find my outlet, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. like, uh, I'm just happy I did. And, and, and also too, you're, you got that, you're a full career guy too. Cause you know, I'm, I'm imagining with the, being a team manager, you know, with three brands, you got emails, you got, you could sit down a computer and do emails for an entire day and, and pack, send out those packies. You know, <laughs> send out, you send it out pack, this guy's let, letting it, making it rain with the packies. Ah, dude. Three got, brands. How many people is that? Yeah. Dude, it's a, I mean, I couldn't tell you how many people You don't even is. know. I literally have no idea. I mean, I have a, an official team riders, you know, obviously, but 
it's more of like grip tape's gnarly, dude. Oh like, yeah, I'm oh, like, that's like countless people. That's just like everyone in the industry sitting me up. You know yeah. what I mean? And I love being that dude. And I, it, I'm not just saying like Mob is literally like the best grip tape. When people don't yeah. skate Mob, I'm like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, <laughs> honestly, I'm like, like, like I'm a Jessup guy. I'm like, I, just when you think you know somebody, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, no, but I, I, I'm super stoked to work uh, at Mob with with Cairo and. It's, I'm actually super stoked to like hook up people with grip tape. And like, I now I'm getting hit up by like very different groups of skaters, you know what I mean? Which is really cool. Like, people from the from weekend skateboards hitting me up to day one song to it's just like it's just a really rad group mm-hmm. of skaters. So that's really cool. And then Rick Dale, we're like re, re we kind of like re, rebranding it kind of again, and which is really fun to do. And it's I'm adding new team riders, and it's really cool. It's kind of giving it like the OG image, but a little more like teched out, and kind of having trying to have some fun with it too, you know. So it's it's super cool. And NHS is amazing, dude. Like that place is such a well oiled machine that it's like so historic. What are all the brands on NHS? There's a lot. Santa Cruz, Creature, uh, Independent, Bronson, OJ, OJ yeah. Richta, Mob. Um, they have other ones that I'd like that are like NorCal or I don't know. I don't really know like the detailed ones like that, but like it's really incredible going there. I went there one time right before COVID hit and I got to see like the museum and everything like that. Like, this is such a like, historical skateboard company. So really glad to, for, to work for NHS and soul tech yeah, and do a skateboard podcast is like pretty fucking cool mm-hmm. to me. So we're talking rope packies. We're talking yeah. wheel packies. We're talking shoe packies. We're talking grip tape packies. Yeah, dude, they're flying. Uh, I dude, from my computer, over. I have access to all. I'm this. If you need grip tape, hit me yeah, up. Copy paste addresses all day long. <laughs> dude, dude, you know what the coolest thing is? Is sending myself boxes. Oh, there you uh, go. <laughs> that's pretty sick. One for yeah. you, two for me. Here it's, we go. It's not necessarily. <laughs> it's not necessarily that. It's 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 more of like I get to I know exactly what's available and what I can send to myself. Right. You, no. Well, since you're the team manager, you're like you know. We're going to do a rebrand. I want to put myself on the pro team, and I'm actually going to pay myself <laughs> the most on the team. <laughs> With all these brands. <laughs> I've never really – you know what was a weird time was, like, me at the first start of me being team manager for S because I, like, I like didn't want to be in the front, but I did want to be in the front. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a pro, but I didn't, you know. Um, You're still a rider for S. I still this, ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I would say so. I just, like, when it comes to Richta, I'm not putting myself on the team. Okay, you know what I mean? got it. Mob, I'm not putting myself on the team. Um, I just do my, uh, my, I'll put my own skateboard content on my own platforms, I guess you would say, but yeah, I'm not really trying to be that guy. Dude, I kind of want to rewind back to some skate nerd ish, yeah. uh, cause doing some, uh, doing some recon for the episode. Uh-huh. Uh, and I grew up loving the KO video and you skate to that, that common part. Yeah. Dude, that part is fucking awesome. A eh? thank you. And, uh, you know what I always loved that what we always tripped out on back East was, um, the flippy hard flips, you know, the, the you know, actual you, like the, flipping flip, hard like, yeah, 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 yeah. Cause, cause it they, they was really common to see the hard flip that was kind of like the folded style. It, it was like, yeah. Like goes Muska up, style, yeah. I guess you and would say back yeah. then, like there was only a few people that had the flippy hard flips as I yeah. call it. And it was dude, the one you do over the rail and the tray flip at the end. That, that was a fucking awesome part. Thanks dude. Yeah. I think I remember watching, you know, Mike Carroll would do hard yes, flips to the side. Dude, uh, modus operandi opening line. Oh, he didn't do a, Oh, he did do a hard flip yeah, at the end. Yeah. 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 That, that line's incredible. Mm-hmm. That's one of the, most. That was one of the first flippy hard flips. I yeah, like, like, I, I never seen him do, doing it in like some line mm-hmm. in a four and one. I was like, "What the fuck was that?" Mm-hmm. And I, but like, I know every trick, but like I, that that's a hard flip. Yeah, you were so used to seeing it that like vertical way that you mm-hmm. never really saw it the actual way. It's supposed to, like a technical hard flip. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was like, and then I saw Justin Case doing it. I don't know if you remember Justin mm-hmm. Case. He wrote for City, City Stars. Stars kid. Yeah, yeah, super sick dude, and he would do them like that. And I just got super pumped. And I never learning, dude, it took me a, I was like 360 flipping shit. I was already like filming, mm-hmm. but that trick, I think in my wheels or hot wheels I had in an issue 63, four and one, I did a hard flip in the line at the Santa Monica, uh, there's the, the, the sand gaps. I did it in the line. That's the first hard flip I ever like pretty much filmed or like did like, oh, no way. like I just, I was so hard to learn that. Yeah. Like the front shove it kickflip way, yes. right? And I filmed that was the first one. And then it took me like six months 
So it was weird to learn a trick, like to really want to learn that trick and then kind of perfect it. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, tricks fun. So, so where you're at right now, speaking of, of hard flips, uh, Ryan Gallant, oh, hard yeah. flip, uh, connoisseur, yeah. you'd say has an incredible brand called visit skateboards. Yes. Yes, and, he does. And that's the boards you're skating right now. Right? That's the boards I'm skating right now. I'm, it's kind of cool just to like go back to working with Ryan. Right. Cause we rode for expedition together and he was honestly one of my favorite skaters when the PJ lab video came out. Him and PJ and Jeremy, I was like, these guys are the shit. <clears throat> and then a uh, big fan of Ryan, um, I, he just hit me up. He was like, dude, you want a board? I'll give you a board. And I was kind of like, I was like, dude, I'll be honest with you. I want a board because I think it's a really cool story. But I'm just like, I'm not going to be filming video parts, dude. And he's like, it's all good. You're good. And I was like, thanks, dude. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's so, like, it's like more of like. You know, just go do what you do and whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to help him out a little bit. Like, he'll ask me if, what do you think, what, uh, if, he'll send me to some designs. He'll be like, what do you think? So it's it's really cool. And that dude's awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? He's very particular in the way he does mm-hmm. things. So any if he brings me anything, usually it's like, I don't really need to say anything. It's like mm-hmm. already good, you know. You know, it's pretty wild, dude. I've never talked about it on this show or anything, but uh, he is from the exact same town as me in Massachusetts. No way. And he mm-hmm. used to pick me up when I was in Middle school, I was probably like a the eighth grade or something like that. I was obsessed with skating. You know that age where you're just like, it is the it's everything. It's ev- it's everything. Yeah, it's yeah. literally everything. Like people are talking about other shit. And you're like, oh yeah, fucking. Dude. You want to? <laughs> what do you? I don't even know. Like, dude, ride your bike to the skate park yeah, with it on your backpack and just <laughs> skate from like nine in the morning till fucking dark, basically. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, so around that time when I was just hyper obsessed, he his older sister or my older sister and his older brother were friends they knew each other from the same town he would pick me up and i would go skate true east oh wow and uh and it was before they were filming for pg lad's wonderful horrible life and it was just incredible because that 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 wonderful horrible life came out that expedition alone part came out yeah. and you know for me to see somebody from my hometown in little town in massachusetts go on to be in the DC video and be pro and just realize like, Oh shit. Like, and, and take the time to pick me up and go skate. Yeah. It changed. It honestly changed my life. It changed the trajectory of my life because I think I was like, it's possible yeah. to make it out of this little town in Massachusetts. Yeah. And it was just cool to see what he's doing now with visit because you know, it's just like there's it, for a long time, it was like element and fucking zero. And there's like a handful of huge brands yeah. that were kind of untouchable. And now you see these little brands like, like visits, like he's running out of his garage. Yeah. You want to, you want to start a brand? Like you fucking started a brand and it's awesome. Yeah. And I, I, I don't, that's a lot of work. A board brand too. Well, there's a board shortages and shit yeah. like that. I'm like, fuck, that must be terrifying mm-hmm. to go through all this stuff. Yeah. But him and his wife do it together and it's rad yeah. to see. So dude, you buy a board from him, you get like a little handwritten note and yeah. a fucking board and it's like, dude, it's awesome. Yeah. I trip out. Like, if I see people posting like, oh, I got your board. I'm like, dude, that's so crazy. Thank you. Mm-hmm. It's like, I appreciate all the, all the fans out there, man. Totally. I, I, I always, I, yeah, I just never looked at, I don't know. I trip out that I'm here. You know what I mean? I don't. It's just a fun time, and if someone respects what I do, then thank you. Because mm. I don't know, I just love what I do, so you, I appreciate you, it. And I also find it really cool where you're, you're just like figuring out brands that you're like aligned with, you know, yeah. as opposed to being like, well, I'm gonna try to squeeze the most. I, I got my own, sh- like whatever. I'm gonna squeeze the most money out of this company or that, or try to do. You're like, oh, I'm just doing my thing, and like if you're aligned with it and you're cool with this is what I'm gonna do, then then yeah. let's figure it out, you know. Yeah. And that's awesome. It's worked out really well. It seems like. Yeah, I've I don't like I don't know how I got into the position, but I'm just it, Don. People give me the <gasps> Don gives me like, hey, you, you just do what you do. You know yep. what I mean? You don't have to go film this video part. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to, go for it. Like whatever, yeah. but. Yeah, I'm giving a lot of free range to do things, so it's cool. Uh, one one thing Don was saying too, he he attributes because I was doing my research talking to Don Brown, and he was saying he thinks that your 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 positivity has a lot to do with it because you're you're, oh, you're wow. a very positive person. I think uh, that thanks. goes a long way, you know. I, I mean, it's crazy we're skate we're we're out here snowboarding and skating this for a living, right? And there's no one no one told you how this was gonna work. You know, yeah, there's no blueprint. Uh, a lot there's, of people told you it might not work. Yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, not going to, co- I didn't go to college or anything like that. So I'm just, I've had fun this entire time. And a lot of people don't get to do that. So I'm just happy to be just, dude, we're just hanging out with my favorite skaters and friends and that's it, dude. So it's fun. That's I'm cool. Dude, especially yeah. also though, being, being kind of positive in a world of, uh, it, harsh critics, you know, it's kind of cool to hate on shit and, and yeah. you, you gotta have, you gotta have a line of what's cool and what's not to a degree, but it's kind of cool also to be like, 
open-minded. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, everyone has their own shit-talking ways or whatever. You yeah. know, you're like even bullshitting with your friends and yeah, whatever. Course. But I just try to put out into to the world. I don't try to put out. Actually, I don't. I'm not trying anything. I just genuinely just. I'd rather hear positive things than negative things. I think a lot of people would say that, but that's why it, the internet's nuts too. The last year was like there was so much shit on the internet. It was mm-hmm. nuts. But uh, yeah, positivity I, breeds positivity. Yeah, it's so it's a good way to be. Yeah, I mean, what do you would you rather feel negative or like would you rather be sad about something or be happy? I mean, yeah. I don't know. Some people seem to be want to be sad about stuff, but not me. Yeah, I mean, it's not my style. Uh, what we got next, dude? You okay, <laughs> here we go. You pick something. I was like, "What's going on?" Well, the next section uh, we're going to be talking about pub beer for a hot second. Uh, oh, this I, right here. Yeah, that's what you're drinking. How yeah. is that thing? It's delicious. I'm going to finish the rest of it. Yeah, put yeah. it down. So, uh, pub beer is a great beverage company. They support the show. They're a big reason. They're a presenting sponsor of the show. Uh, their their motto is what, buds? Cheap fun beer. And is it cheap fun beer? It's cheap. It's fun, and it's delicious. How fun would you say that beer is? On a scale of one to ten. 12. Wow. Okay. Dude, that's that's fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I just pounded the rest of it. I'm like, whoa. That's fun, dude. All right. <laughs> See, Kelly's having a good time. I've okay. only had one, so yeah. I'm feeling it's cheap fun beer, It's dude. a great yeah. beer. Yeah. All right, we're going to get to the pub beer crap shoot. Here we go. Welcome to the pub beer crap shoot. <laughs> Dave, Ch- Dave Chappelle saying clackety, 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 clack. Uh, very poor audio recording did on my phone. But uh, <laughs> so um, <laughs> basically what you're going to do is you get some dice in front of you. Oh, okay. You roll those. Uh, so anywhere between 2 and 12, if it lands on a Goon Gear logo, that means you, uh, that's a 6, I believe. And then there's something that aligns you might have to do. You might have to talk about your worst bail, uh, your favorite person to party with, things like that. So go ahead and give that thing a roll. All right. Four. four. We got a four. Oh, ironically, what is your worst bail of your career? Ooh, worst bail. Uh, it's a pretty easy one to talk about. Uh, it's actually documented on the internet. Uh, I broke my ankle skating the Westchester Park in L.A. I, I tried to 360 off this bump over a can, and it, like, my trucks were... It, it, the, the bushings were all, like, blown out, and my, it was super hot out, so the trucks felt really weird, and it wasn't my normal setup. And it just it w- and I tried to tray flip. And it w- I kept doing it, but it didn't, didn't feel right. I was trying. I don't know why I was doing this. I was tray flipping over this bumble or can. I was doing it every try. And then after, I was trying nolly tray. And for some reason, nolly, I was trying to land it, and then right after nolly tray on flat mm. ground, just to, like, whatever. And I couldn't do the nolly tray, so I kept doing the 360 flip, and my board, like, when I tray flipped, it just zipped out all weird, and it got under my feet. It started spinning, and my foot came down on the truck sideways, and it popped out sideways. Oh, God. Ooh. And I was talking about this last night. I don't know how. Dude, my foot popped out sideways, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe this is, like, insane. And that that feeling, like, it hurts, but you're like, what the hell's going on? You're like, the adrenaline's flying. I don't know why, but I somehow had the, the reasoning to pull out my phone and po- shoot a photo of it and post it on Instagram. Whoa, right then like, and there? Like, on my page. This is in 2011. It was Jeez. January 4th, 2011. And I posted it on Instagram. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> like, you know, like, why or how? Mm-hmm. And then I went into the ER, and I had to sit there, uh, my foot hanging off sideways. They wouldn't <sighs> do anything. They couldn't put me out because I had been chugging so much water because I was skating that, like, you can't have anything in your system. It's like if you go get surgery, you mm. usually can't drink the night or eat or drink the yeah, night before. Yeah, you can't eat or drink since yeah. uh, midnight or something. Yeah, so like they had, I had to wait there for four hours, oh, God. just sitting at my, looking at my leg. I was so out of it, dude. The morphine they were giving me, whatever they were giving me, I was like, this is kind of fun. <laughs> like, but I was like, I shot another photo in the. I was, I don't know why I was doing that, going through Instagram. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what I was doing, but um, that was probably my worst bail. 
Beautiful. That well, sounds <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a. Uh, how, how did the picture do on Instagram? People, people into it. Actually, you, you, you know what's funny? <laughs> you know what's funny? I remember talking to P Rod about that, and P Rod was like, "Dude, I unfollowed you when you posted that." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, followed. but he like, oh, we, I mean, we follow each other now. Yeah, then he but followed it, you back. Yeah, you, bu- you just bummed him out because, like, like, come on, man. Like, uh, there's some people that have those things. They see him, they like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. fucking. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm I, out. I heard someone, my friend, so I posted mm-hmm. a photo of a snake a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And like my friend unfollowed me because I can't unfollowed I can't, you. I can't stand snakes. I was like, Jesus, unfollow your friends. I'm can't gonna... please everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, yeah. we're gonna get into a little section of the show we do called hot takes. Uh, so we like to ask, and generally we ask the snowboarder, but we ask skateboarder. Who is the Michael Jordan or the goat of skateboarding? Who you got? Who man, I would say both male and female. Give us both sides. Wow. I mean, there's so many different aspects of the way you could look at that, like the OG or what's going on now. I would say right now, uh, Ashad Ware. Wow, great answer. Yeah. Like this, the way, because he's so well rounded at every, like flat ground to skating transition to skating stairs to handrails to whatever it is. Like he, and he looks buttery when he does it. So, and he's got the best, like one of my favorite styles. Yeah, he looks so cool. Yeah. yeah. It's weird too, because it's like, He's not robotic in any way. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just flows well and stylish. Mm-hmm. Some people are very very robotish. Yeah, if that may, it's not yeah. even a word, but you know what I mean. Robotic. Yeah, robotic, robotic would yeah, be yeah. the word I think. Yes, that would be a good one. Um, that's it's a pub beer kicking. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shout out to pub beer. Yeah, and then female. Good question. I mean, I would say Raisa is like up there, but she's has. I don't have more of a story from her yet. Um. Man, uh, Alexis Sablone. Oh, great answer. Yep. I would say that because, I mean. PJ Led's one of horrible life was a long time ago. Yeah. She's no, had she, some years. She's, she's just in the Olympics, dude. Yep. That's And she's came up 50 50 The hub is still like, yeah. dude, so good, man. Mm-hmm. So sick. Dude, sidebar, I remember listening to Aishad's episode of the Nine Club. And uh, I'm er, is so good because he talks about skating like twin boards or whatever. Like oh, the twin tails. Twin tails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you do a front shove. You just keep on going. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a weird thing. That's such a weird concept. And I, and I I was like, but dude, your trucks, because yeah. my trucks are different. Like, they feel different. If mm-hmm. I switch my board around, it yeah. feels way different. I can't ride it backwards. Yeah. yeah. Unless I'm skating switch, right? Like, mm-hmm. you, and he's like, no, it's just the same on both sides. I'm like, that is wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, so if you had a dream skate session, you had one skate session in your life, three people, who are you going skating with? I'm going to say... P Rod, can I get dude P Rod in when he was like eighteen years old? That, oh yeah, when that I first era. when I first skating saw for him, S, yeah, when he was skating for S in like City, City stars, stars, yep, baggy pants, little kid, but like in bloom. I would yep. skate with him back then. I would ju- just met him, mm-hmm. and it was literally mind blowing to see him in person, like to see him skate because you saw the videos and it was super sick. You know he was good, but you saw him in person, you're like. He did a switch trade. We're like talking. He's like, oh, yeah, you're Kelly Hart, right? Yeah, dude, I heard about you from the uh, whatever. And like, we're skating the spot. And it was actually a trick he had. And yeah, right. I think he like switch crooked this ledge. I was, was when we, the day we met. And he just, we're sitting there. You know, you kind of start talking with someone and you just like get your board and like tray flip, or whatever. He was talking to me and he just kind of set up for switch tray and did the best switch tray I've ever, like proper, like catching like a regular tray flip. And I was like, what? Like, so that era, of Piro, I'm getting really descriptive. I like this. Yeah, yeah. This, is perfect. <laughs> this, is good. this is the ideal answer here. Uh, Brian Wenning. Oh, wow. Because he's like my favorite We're skater. We're talking photosynthesis era? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that era. Yep. That's good. Yeah, exactly that era. And then maybe I would say Van England. Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe Wait. Van England around like. When he was riding for DC, mm. when he had the cornrows, yeah, he's, yep. <laughs> the, that cur- that curve ledge, he does like switch Mongo push for a long time. Oh yeah, and then yeah, does yeah. Like what, it was a switch crook yep. reaver. Yeah, yeah, like that. Like I'm just I don't know. Those guys are my favorite. Some of my favorite skaters. But mm-hmm. three, that's yeah. I would choose those three. Okay, I got another thing. Sidebar. Um, I, I, Eastern Border made a T-shirt, I believe, and they they I think they said uh, switch Mongo is still Mongo. What are your thoughts on that? Switch Mongo is is definitely accepted. Yes, it's not it's not bad. It, Mongo, I wouldn't even say I don't like. You don't see anyone pushing Mongo. No, that, that knows what they're doing, right? <laughs> like <laughs> knowing that you that knows what they're doing pushes Mongo. That would be weird, and it would be interesting. 
with all these skaters coming out doing all the like, different types of skating, it'd be really interesting to see if someone could make Mongo look good. Imagine if like Wade D pushed Mongo. Yeah, and like, he made it look just, good, but though. then he said something doesn't tray. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, but like, you, it, it's it's almost aesthetically, it just doesn't look right. Yeah, you know what I mean. No matter how good you could do a Mongo push. Mm -hmm. Regular, yeah, it doesn't because yeah. your shoulders aren't backwards. Or yeah, something. that's got, why Switch Mongo works is because the shoulders are there. Yeah, like it has the same stance as the regular one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I don't agree with Switch Mongo as Mongo. You see Josh Kalis pushing at a bump over trash can, Switch Mongo, and yeah, turning his shoulders. Like I'm sorry, all bets are off at that point. Switch yeah. Mongo is acceptable. Yeah, dude, there's so many. Like I love seeing like Tiago Lemos kind of pushing that still like you know what i mean it makes it look good and most people don't really realize that but as a someone who grew up skating i totally see that you know so i think mm -hmm. it's really cool but yeah great little talking point yeah so um, there's no one who pushes mongo anymore is that what's up i mean there might be when there's younger like the younger kids yeah there's i had, no, I had like a homie pros that you know of that do it no pros i had a homie uh his name's ollie back home he uh he grew up i Went to my high school and skated the park. He skated for like years and would do huge airs out of like this bump and stuff like that. And he pushed Mongo, and I it it, I, it, it never hit to me to like I was like I wasn't like maybe I was like twenty years old and I was like dude you're still pushing Mongo. <laughs> like, like, I kind of didn't realize that. I was like, well, that's what I had never. It didn't really make a difference. Mm -hmm. I was but just interesting. We're gonna talk about the bomb hole of the week right now, buds. Let's get into it. You know, at first, we should maybe just talk about uh, violently ragdolling. Yes. It's something that I don't care what your skill level is. No one is above it. You know who is a master of ragdolling? I, I can think of a lot of people. Who are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking about Pat Moore. Pat Moore. Uh, also, <laughs> if I got to say, Timmy Ronan has put some of the biggest uh, bomb holes, hot tubs I've ever seen in jump landings. You should have seen Johnny Paxson out there. Six, oh, yeah. six foot six. Just a with all appendages out. Ten person dual jet hot tub. Exactly. <laughs> bomb hole in the landing. Love that. Well, if you're gonna be if you're gonna be absolutely exploding in jump landings, what are you gonna want, buds? You're gonna want Volcom Outerwear's patented Zip Tech jacket to pant interface. Now, why is that, buds? Tell me. I'll tell you what. What this does, it allows you to connect your jacket to your pants with a zipper, and it's gonna keep winter out of your boxer shorts. Pretty much, it's gonna keep you dry, keep your outerwear dry all day, or your not your outerwear, but your keep your underlayers dry. Underlayers dry yeah. all day long, keeping you out of the lodge, keeping you having a longer day. And just uh, not going home frozen. Absolutely. I would imagine that the amount that uh, Pat Moore tomahawks and bomb holes, he probably would have like a multiple hypothermia instances if he didn't have zip tech. Exactly. He probably wouldn't have made it out of the backcountry some of those days. What's cool about this technology is it's it's it works with the uh, older jacket to a newer jacket. So if you want to get a new jacket but you have older pants, no problem. It all still is compatible. It's in their women's. It's in their men's. It's in the junior outerwear. And uh, like like we were saying before, you can attach a junior pair of pants to a double XL men's jacket if if you so desire. That's some, that's some great technology. <laughs> it's uh you know it's it's almost like having a one piece, but you don't need, you're not you're wearing a separate separate gear. It's pretty much like having a spacesuit out there. There you go. Well, you don't want to fart in the in the spacesuit. The only downside <laughs> is it might get trapped in there. It might be a little bit of a disaster. Uh, I, unconfirmed. Uh, so what 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 do we got going on here with giveaways? So. If you could post on Instagram your favorite bail, hashtag Volcom Bomb Proof, at the bomb hole, at Volcom Snow, and what's going to happen? You're going to get yourself a little prize pack from Volcom, prize pack from us at the bomb hole, one of your favorite riders, Scott Blum, maybe Mike Grav, maybe uh, Pat Moore. They're going to pick the winner. And again, it, this can be a bail on a rail. It doesn't have to be in the powder. It's kind of your best bail. And what's the hashtag, buds? Volcom Bomb Proof. Okay, so make sure you upload your bail clips on Instagram and hashtag at the bomb or tag at the bomb hole and hashtag Vulcan Bomb Proof. Let's see those memorable bails. I'm talking scorpions. I'm talking carcass tossing. I want to see it all. Let's I'd go. I'd like to see a good taco as well. Yes, love a good taco. A good taco. Let's go. Okay, we're going to one last guest question, and this is from a friend of snowboarding, ripping snowboard, ripping human, Dave Marks. Here we go. Oh, yes. This one is coming from somebody with legs made of concrete that um, has been trying to, in a very literal sense, up their game. Can pop be learned to an extent, or is it God-given? <laughs> That's my question. That's actually a good question, because people are like, how do you kick up so high? Like, when you're younger, they ask that. And it's just repetition of practicing, you know what I mean? Um, 
I think you just naturally try to like when you learn it, perfect the trick, you start to like put more power into it and it gets higher and higher. But I mean, getting pop like Tiago, that's that's insane. I don't know. I that's don't know if everybody can do that. Yeah. Some people just have an unnatural pop. Some people have na- some people develop that over time, but some people just have that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, all those acai bowls or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. I don't. He switched back tail that ledge of Makba. That thing is, uh, it's probably taller than this, dude. Mm-hmm. It, it is so unbelievably high. Mm-hmm. That was like, when that trick won trick of the year, that was a weird one, dude, because that was like, it was like J- Jamie Foy's front crook versus switchback tail on a tall ledge. Mm-hmm. Such different types mm-hmm. of skating that are insane, you know? But I guess what, but it's interesting, right? Like, what would you, what could you rather, I would rather try to switch back tail, but I could never come close yeah. to it. I couldn't get up to it. Yeah. I, I would never want to try front crook El Toro. Oh yeah, but I could physically try it. But I would actually probably physically die. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> so it's a, it was such a like I didn't choose that one, but it was like mm-hmm. it was a hard one. That one was a hard one to choose. Yeah, that I'm year. sure there's some a lot of debate going yeah. on. Yeah. One thing I'm curious about is who are your influences growing up when you're a kid? Who are your early skate influences? Early skate. I mean, Costin. I think the way obviously he was like the one of the best skaters, but the way he dressed. Like you look at photos of me when I was a kid, I tried to dress just like him, mm-hmm. like Huff. Just the way he did stuff, his style was so unique. And like him, I didn't really, I never really liked lip slides on ledges, mm-hmm. but he made me like lip slides on ledges. You know, um, I, I, dude, Brian Winning was in my when I was like developing, like actually skating and filming. He he became one of my favorite skaters, but I think early on, definitely, like I would say, cost him, just. I don't know. He made me fall in love with S. He's been wearing the shoes, the, this cost in one shoe. Kalis, Josh Kalis for sure. I remember like it was a period like in eighth grade, I was just like obsessed with like DC and Kalis. That's why I started learning trade flips. Mm-hmm. I was like, that just looks fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and who else? PJ Ladd at one point when that, when that video came out, that was just like, that hit, that was one video that hit uh, everywhere. Like there was, Across the board, everyone was trying to be PJ Ladd. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The SXL like, was in yeah. heavy rotation. Oh, dude, he made that shoe. Even though it was already like the best skate shoe, he made it even bigger. That was a pretty cool moment, actually. Just seeing that, like when that video came out, to like change the game mm-hmm. when VHS tapes were fucking going down. Oh, you know? yeah, so. that was unreal, dude. Going back to that Brian Wenning time period, I remember being a kid. And he had an interview where he talked about, like, they're like, how'd you get so good? Or something like that. It was like a pro spotlight around the time photosynthesis came out. Uh And he basically said he, he's like, I would just go and do an alley and skate flat with a gallon of water. And I I remember just, like, reading that and, like, (laughs) going and doing that. I'd literally just be like, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go to 7-Eleven. I'm going to get a gallon of water. I'm going to skate flat for, like, six hours. And like that's how he got so good at switch tray flips. Yeah. Like, he has his tricks dialed, Mm -hmm. right? And it was like, yeah. that's the most Brian winning thing to do, though. Yeah. It's like to go get water and go to an alley, mm-hmm. like and skate. It's pretty sick. One, one thing Gallant used to always say, too, I remember when I was a kid, I don't know if he still stands by this, but he used to say flat ground was the key to skateboarding. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I think it is. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? You can skate flat ground any, like, that's like the most accessible type of skateboarding to do, I would say, right? That's why I related to it because I didn't have like a freaking ramp in my house. Um, but I think if you can develop good tricks, like I just think it shows that your skate you can develop you can use that go to fucking do it on transition and do it downstairs or flip into handrails and it kind of like broadens your skating a lot so I think it's the key for I, don't, I think day one might have said that too somewhere mm-hmm. but yeah I I agree with that it's basically the fundamentals right it's fundamentals for yeah. sure like you, dude I trip out there I didn't get a chance to see it but there was that vert alert thing that happened yeah yeah I saw the footage it was incredible. I saw Bob Burnquist. It was rad to see him skating in S's because I sent him a box recently. Yes. Dude, he was doing switch flips on like, the big extension. And I was like, sick. That's so gnarly to do that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think I think flat ground, that's why I, I like it so much because it's pleasing to watch. Mm-hmm. Especially I was, I, that, I didn't say this to Mike Mo this last week. I was about to let him say it to him because I was like, dude, I got to, I wanted to say, I'm like, dude, when I watch your flat crown, it like makes me happy. <laughs> like, like it's weird to say that to your friend though, no. but I was like, when I watched your footage, like when I was a kid, we we're the same age or like I was a little older, but I was like, you, your flat crown made me want to go skate. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I think that's cool. Uh, who do you think has the best kick foot? I, you might stump me on that one. There's so many good ones. Yeah. Like, Gallant honestly has a really good kick flip. Wade has a good kick flip. 
uh, P Rod, dude. I don't know. Like <laughs> back then, I w- like Apple Yard had a really sick oh, kick yeah. clip because he was like so like just mellow when he mm-hmm. did it. Arms were down. He just kick football buttery, you know. You're saying all goofy skaters. You think they're you have a bias? I I think I have a bias. Do you? Yeah, are I you like, regular footed? I'm goofy. I skate you, goofy. You know so what's I, weird? I like watching the goofy. Yeah, you I, snowboard regular, huh? Yeah. What? Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, bizarre. you the same skate thing when goofy. I used to skate, yeah. Yes, it's actually a lot a common thing. Not that common, but it's there's other. But it's people. common enough. Yeah. Do you do you have a reasoning kind of behind it, or maybe some sort of I, logic? I always thought. Um, I, I have a weird ambidextrous thing. Like Me too. I think I I play hockey lefty, golf righty. Um, Skate goofy, snowboard regular. Which way do you surf? Surf goofy. Me too. And I, uh. I think it, it might have had something to do with the fact that I got a board, like a Walmart board called a Black Snow, and the bindings were just set up regular as a kid. So I just learned regular. Oh. But, it, but if you think about it, like I'm way more comfortable doing almost just about everything regular. It's just like if I'm going to bomb up, if you know, snowboarding when you're, if I'm going straight into a jump and I'm going fast, like regular, I'm so comfortable regular. If I got to do the same thing, switch, it's, it's significantly like more scary to do, you know? So what do you think is harder for you skating switch on a skateboard or switch on a snowboard? Uh, probably on a skateboard just, but some flip tricks, like maybe my switch flips a little better than my kick flip. And so, which is cer- certain things are, are different. It's kind of weird. There's some, you know, you, certain people, I just think my right leg's stronger. So like what switch, about your shoulders? Do they, they turn backwards on switch heels and, and switch front shoves. They're I'm turned backwards and switch back lips on a snowboard. They're turned backwards because that's because it, it looks switch looks switch because that's okay, another okay. thing. Yeah, yeah. Because like, like, you know, P Rod has a thing where his shoulders are open on his like on some of his like where you it doesn't even look switch. Yeah, I see. So uh, very few people have that talent. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even say P Rod has that talent. He he has the actual physical talent of mm-hmm. skateboarding, but he doesn't have that way of. Have you seen you know Leandre Sanders? The guy that has no switch, basically. Yes. Switch guy? Like, is that his name? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or scapegoat. scapegoat on that's He's is, the yeah. homie. Fucking yeah. best dude. But that is some different that, type. That, that doesn't make any that sense. That doesn't make any sense. That's what I mean. That, what I mean, like, he doesn't have talent is, like, he doesn't have that where, like, you can go each stance and your yeah. sh- shoulders are wide open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you do, like, it would trips me out when he has a 180. Mm-hmm. And in the air, you see his shoulders move, but then they do the same thing when he lands. It's not like when I do a 180, my mm-hmm. shoulders are closed off mm-hmm. right when he does a 180 his shoulders are open he 180s and the shoulders are still open mm-hmm. it's a really weird thing to look at because mm-hmm. you're so used to seeing people skate switch like you, you know if they're skating switch mm-hmm. yeah so yeah there's only a handful of people and i saw someone else doing this oh, you know, the thing about that is too is that he skates street regular and he skates transition what? goofy. Yeah, it's, That's dude, wild. it's bizarre yeah. looking. You can't figure it out. You're like sitting there. My wires get crossed watching you, him skate. You're like, what's going the, on? I remember seeing him on Instagram like in 2015. And he was skating the Venice Park, and he would skate the like the fucking uh, the bowl and shit like that. And he'd come out in the street course in the same clip. And you were like, how did he do like a huge backside air and then a backsmith and a back tail, then come out and then kill a front nose grind down the rail. Like the other way, like switch foot, was yeah. that switch foot front nose grind. That was insane. And then it w- was a back tail and then the deep end, s- like switch. So you like, <laughs> can't figure it out. Huh? Yeah, that's so crazy. It was super cool to see that. So I mean, yeah, I mean that's crazy. You do that though. That's fucking pretty cool. Yeah, there's a, there's a few other uh, people that are fucking heavy hitters that do that. I do. Um, um, I dr- this is not really that crazy, but I dribble. I play basketball. I dribble left handed and I shoot right. Oh, okay. That's yep. not like and like I try to dribble right handed. I yeah. guess it just doesn't feel as natural. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, I, I skateboard goofy, but I fingerboard regular. So that's, that's actually a little bizarre as well. That is bizarre. <laughs> yeah, that's super weird. Dude. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, Dan, we've been doing this thing for a minute. Um, but one thing I think would be cool for actually before we even start wrapping it up, we got we to gotta ask you about snowboarding. You no, ever I've, been? I've been snowboarding twice. Zoomies 100K? <laughs> no. Where would you go? Uh, so the first time was i can't even remember where i was i don't know i think big bear big bear big bear, big yep, bear yep. Or mammoth yeah what's more accessible from where big i live a uh, big bear so i was a big bear yeah yep. i did that and honestly i can't like here's the thing i have about snowboarding is that like it was i have nothing against snowboarding to be honest but i have this weird thing in my head that happened remember i told you about my ankle that i broke yep. it the day before i went snowboarding and I don't know why, but I associate my time snowboarding oh, with that trauma, with that ankle breaking. It had nothing, it had nothing to do with it, 
like physically. Yeah. But like I've never like I've never I've snowboarded one other time. It was my second time ever in my life snowboarding. And then then that next day literally broke my ankle. So, so it's just association. It was like it was it was a, it was association. So I was like, oh man, I like I don't know why. I was like, do you want to go snowboarding? I was like, no, I don't. But even though I never got hurt snowboarding, yeah. it's because I've associated with that. That's, and that's crazy. A, but I, I'm super down to go snowboarding. But what I've always had this problem with, like, I used to surf a lot, but I got over surfing because I had to go to the beach and to fucking do all this oh, fucking process it. for yep. it. If I want to go snowboarding, I have to get my board. I have to. I don't have a board. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process. It's a process. I have to go far away to do mm. it. And my skateboard just took over because it's literally in my driveway. Mm -hmm. Um. I do. I trip out. I watch the thirty-two. When so my my uh, old roommate at the Nine Club house before the Nine Club started, we have a friend Josh Cunningham. Um, he loves snowboarding, and he showed me a thirty-two video, and I was like, "Oh, because you're in that video, yeah. right?" Yeah, I was like, "Oh, fuck, there's Chris." That's like I know the dude, but like I was, I was like, "Whoa, whoa, dude, you would you guys were doing this shit? This is insane!" <laughs> <laughs> like, like I was really tripping, like on the spots you were finding, like because I know the logic between finding a spot, but also like you're finding these spots, you're building these spots. Yeah, a lot of work, a lot of work, and I'm like, this is wild. Like I know Dave Marks. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I know you, and I I know <laughs> Scott Stevens is, but like I I don't know a lot about it. But I I went to a snowboard premiere at a Zoomies event in October in 2017. And it was one of the craziest videos I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I'm a fan. It's like I just don't have the access of doing yeah, it. Yeah, totally. No. I, I did it. So when I started, I was automatically thought I was going to be good because yeah. I could skate. Mm -hmm. But I went down. I was started writing, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go right. And I'm like, I'm not turning right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going like, right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you're a skateboarder, like, hey, you want to turn right? Oh, you just go that way. Like, yeah. it's easy. You put your truck out or, like, whatever, your tail and yeah. go that way or lean that way. Now, I was like, there was a whole new process of how to bounce and turn. Yeah. And it took me, and I grew up, honestly, like, I don't, I don't know what the, the, is there, if there's any beef between snowboarders and skiing, I have no idea. But I remember as a kid, we would go to, um, what's it called? I would go to uh, Lake Tahoe. We had a little, like, a place out there, and I would go. Uh, I learned as young, I was a young kid. I learned to ski. And so I got really, I actually got pretty good. I felt really comfortable oh, okay. skiing. Oh, ripping skiing. But okay. I didn't know snowboarding was a, the snowboarding wasn't really a thing back then, it I feel like. It was not quite as popular. It was a thing. Yeah. yeah but, but I didn't know anything about, I didn't know about skating or anything yeah. at that point. I was, like, five. Oh, God. You yeah. know what I mean? So, in my whole family, they were all skiing. Like, it just wasn't, snowboarding wasn't in my even, didn't know they existed. And then when I saw a snowboard, I was like, oh, I want to do that. That looks way better than skiing. No offense to the skiers. I actually have a friend, David Levin, I grew up with, it, and he made these crazy, he worked for, I can't remember what the name of the company was. He worked for a crazy ski company making the videos, and that shit was nuts. Dude, they're going fakey. Yeah, they go yeah, backwards. They're, they're, yeah, they're going backwards. Yeah. Oh. Snowboarding kind of changed skiing. Is that what? You, okay. <laughs> no, it did. They started yeah. making twin tips. Because yeah, true. That's of, a good point. Because of snowboarding, yeah. and then they can go backwards better now. And mm -hmm. I mean, I th I just thought that was really crazy. But I ever since I saw a snowboard, I was like, I just want to snowboard because mm -hmm. I could relate to that. Um, I had a real, and then I went those two times, and then I ne I dude, I have seen the snow maybe twenty times in my life. You know what I mean? Like I don't go up there, so it's not like. I don't know. I just don't mm -hmm. have that. And I skateboarding takes over over every, everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to go do it in front of my house. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So. Well, the one thing that's funny too, with the, like Easton and I, like we really only travel to places that are cold as fuck yeah. and have snow. So yeah. people are like, oh, you ever been to like Hawaii or like, like anywhere warm? Does or it like, snow there? Nope. But <laughs> have you been to like Kazakhstan? <laughs> <and> <laughs> fucking where the, the, Moscow, yeah, Kazakhstan, totally. China. Yeah, like anywhere that's, yeah. Well, so, it sounds like miserable. Like, <laughs> but, like, like, but it sounds kind of dope. No, like, I, we dope like the cold. Miserable. I think we like the cold. But yeah, we like it. The one thing to it. At, at, at Zoomies 100K that I always thought was so funny, it's all these skateboarders, like Zoomies 100K, all these pro skaters come out, pro athletes athletes from all these different sports and like dude they're all getting fucking destroyed like, <laughs> like broken shoulders like and i remember i don't remember who it was but some pro skater like like blanking on who it was but they're like i'm so hyped to fucking bomb that mountain tomorrow like because it's like bombing a hill on a skateboard yeah. oh, on a snowboard geez. but it's like but it's not really bomb. like you can you can pretty much bomb anything on a snowboard which is not like particularly difficult to like go straight down a hill you yeah. know <laughs> but it's like i'm gonna bomb that hill tomorrow <laughs> So Buds and I, we've traveled to a bunch of fucking wild, cold places. What, where do you guys normally go when you guys go skate? Well, it was interesting. You were talking about like you're going to like 
Kazakhstan or like places that we would never really want to go to if you were just like a just want to go on vacation. Oh, right. right? Yeah. You know? Um, Yeah. Going to like China. I've been there like six or seven times. Mm -hmm. Wow. And like the randomest places, but is the best skating. Yeah. Like I would never want to just go there just to hang out. Like you go there and it's like you're in a different planet. Yeah. It feels like. And then you can't really talk to anyone. But it's the best skating, and there's, it's, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and back then, when we were going so much, they didn't really know what you were doing. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh yeah, we're we're destroying your property and fucking whatever. Like you know, like like people say, like we're we're grinding your ledges and everything like that. But like, they're building this p perfect places all over the place, and they didn't even realize like, why are you guys building it like this? This is <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Like you know, but it, it's funny that there's not a lot of like skaters out there. Mm -hmm. So it was cool at that time to travel out there a lot and. I would go there for like I went. I was there for two months one time. Dude, channel. China, I, yeah, the, the dude. That place is a bizarre place. Yeah, man. like the yeah. the food. Like, how are you feeling about the food when you're there? I got used to it. I kind of yeah. like the food. Do you? I was like, you know, it depends where. Yeah, I mean, it depends I, where. I, I mean, I'm not going to like McDonald's or anything. I mean, I, sometimes I would resort to it. Yeah, but I'm not a McDonald's dude. Yeah, like even though I, it's pretty good, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, you find your spots there, right? Like, I feel like that's like there was like a Thai place we went mm -hmm. to. Where, like, Thai is pretty pretty good like yeah. you know you can get like you, you can't really go wrong with shrimp fried rice or chicken mm -hmm. fried rice or something right yeah and then you find certain places that are kind of americanized a little bit like they got some italian food spot even though it's kind of crazy like yeah it's a little different yeah and you find your way you, everything is just a a, a shock because mm -hmm. i remember going in there going to 7-elevens and if you look at the seven you know like there's food and like they have the food there like to, like you know uh, the, on the fucking rotator thing or whatever yeah the hot food the hot food stuff so this is crazy. I was just in Japan for the Olympics. Food at the Olympic or at Seven Eleven in Japan. Oh, it's awesome! It is banging. You yeah. can eat there every day. Every oh, they day, the little day. pizza buns. They yeah. got these hot little buns. Yeah, they got dude, so many good stuff. The, the rice, rice balls, triangles, and the yeah. balls. Yeah. yeah, the rice balls and triangles. Dude, so good, dude. Mm -hmm. And I would just fuck with that. And then you go to California, or whatever. And it's pretty budget. You know what I mean? Food they have cooking in there. Like when I was a kid, I would crush the hot dogs. But like. Then you go to China and you're like, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, <laughs> it's like an egg in some dark colored soup. Like you like, <laughs> yeah, like, you don't even want to touch that. Stuff. You don't, and like it's crazy because I would be in there and I would like shoot a photo. And they're like, no, no, no photos. I'm like, what? Like that's how crazy. It, I don't know if that China, was a, you're talking about. Yeah, China, yeah, China's why they, they wouldn't let that. me take photos of the food yeah. in Seven Eleven in China. That's kind of weird. And I was like, why? And they have, like, you can buy all, like, the chicken legs, like, actual chicken legs in, like, plastic packaging that's all, like, crazy done. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just, like, a, and that's just how they live. That's fine. Yeah. But, like, it's such, like, a interesting. Well, also, the thing that I th found bizarre is that they, they like, don't, the, the citizens of China don't have, like, access to social media or, like, yeah. news. Not to go down, like, a dark yeah, wormhole. Banned but, like, there. yeah, Facebook, Instagram, like, all those things are, it's, it's banned. So, it, it's it's there's definitely some some strange things I found happening when I was there just with the culture and yeah and like you know it, it was that was a great place to go to and it's just different and if you live there that's just the way you live yeah yeah it was real dude they're, they're so not really like it's and this is not talking shit at all this is the way that they the way they do stuff but they're just like they don't their personal space is not really oh, yeah, yeah. no not like, at all like, not at all there's just way more people so it's, <laughs> I it's remember not there. one of the f i actually laughed really hard at this one time i was there with expedition and joey pepper i was there with him and he was getting off getting off this train and trains are packed and this dude like just walks up and just shoulder checks joey not on purpose just whatever <laughs> joey swings around pissed like, I was on a fuse, like, I'm going to fuck this dude up type <laughs> shit. And the dude just keeps on walking. And I'm just like, it was just so, like, people just don't care. Mm -hmm. They'll fucking spit right next to you. They'll fucking cut in front of you in line. Yeah. Dude, that was a crazy one. You'll be standing at the front in line. And the guy will just walk up right in front of you and try to pay. And you're like, this, all the time. All the time. All the time. Like, and they're like, no, here, you just go to the front and pay. I'm like, what? How, like... What do you mean? There's a line here. There's mm -hmm. honestly a line, mm -hmm. but you're still saying it's okay <laughs> to go to the front and just pay, like whatever. Like I just didn't get it, mm -hmm. and so it's just hard to understand how, how things totally. worked out there. Well, that's one of the coolest things if you look at you know when you take a career where you're like I'm gonna fucking pursue skateboarding, yeah. and you you're probably throwing college out the window. You're you know chances are you, if you're gonna be good at it, you're gonna put so much time and effort towards being good at your craft. You're not really gonna like have as, that much time to focus on school and things like that. Like I always joke, like 
the best skaters probably barely like you know they're so good they barely know how to cook a fucking egg you know some of them you know i'm learning that later in life <laughs> <dude>. like i <laughs> swear like i learned a lot i was so oblivious to like when i was just skating mm -hmm. i didn't understand i didn't i was so oblivious to everything but like, when when sorry to, or, yeah. or, or no sorry to interrupt but when you go to china think about that you you learn you you're like learning about different cultures you're learning yeah. it's maybe street smarts different kind street of smarts. smarts yeah for sure but you it's you're learning street smarts but you can't communicate with anybody <laughs> yeah. right it's a really interesting thing but it was just like it was a really cool thing to do cuz it gets you out of your bubble and like i'm from you know southern california where everything's the weather's perfect and it's like whatever you know what i mean um it's just good to see this the world you forget there's a world out there mm -hmm. you know and i think coming from my zone it was really eye-opening and to like as a only skating in southern california to like seeing japan china going to barcelona and just knowing there's a bigger world that's what i when i first when i was a kid man i would just only eat chicken fingers and hamburgers and pizza like you wouldn't have put sushi in front of me i was like you're tripping dude <laughs> there's no way i'm eating fish mm -hmm. you're out of your mind it's gross and then I remember actually weird, like the first time I had sushi, I, like I was trying to skate this gap with Tony Nguyen and, and Tyrone was there too. And uh, I was shooting with Rick Kostick. I tried to shove it, heel up this gap, fold my ankle, could barely walk. And they're like to the point where they had to like carry me basically. And they're like, well, here's the deal, Kelly. Um, you're going to come eat sushi with us because you can't go anywhere else. <laughs> like <laughs> He can't get away. I, can't, I can never. I couldn't even walk. Yeah, I could hear and Tyrone I, saying Yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> and, they like, you know, and then we went to get sushi. And I'm like, dude, they're like, just try this. It was eel, like freshwater eel or whatever. And I was like, dude, this looks gnarly. And I just tried it. And they're like, how was it? I was like, that was the best thing I've ever it's had. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, it was so cool. Like skating really did open my eye to a world of like, not just like, just the culture and food and like music and all these things. So I'm like really grateful to like see that. Cause a lot of people where I'm from don't mm -hmm. see that type of stuff, you know? So, yeah. I don't know if I could do two months in China, but it was cool. <laughs> I mean, when I went, it was originally, it was me and Justin Eldridge went, it was supposed to be like 20 days. And then Claire of all, it was like me, Justin Eldridge, Guy Mariano. This is for, uh, LRG video? We were just on our own mission. Got it. It yeah. was it was right when China, China was starting to pop off, mm -hmm. and there had been a few trips, and Claraval kind of knew this was, like, this new thing. He was, he went out there with TX and Roderick with TX, and he showed me the footage, and I was like, I'm coming out there. Like, I got LRG to help out in Expedition. They got me a ticket. And then I told Justin at a, at a Trans World premiere, and I was we were, like, drinking. I'm like, dude, I'm going to China, bro. You should check out some spots. And I showed him the, some of the footage, and he was like, Oh, I'm going, but I thought it was like that thing where you, you get drunk. You're like, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, do. I'll see you. Going, I'll see you man. there. <laughs> and then like nothing happens. Dude called me. He's like, yo, I want to go. And so me and Eldridge been at this thing went to China uh, with Clairvall. We're skating out there. We skate these ridiculous spots. We we FaceTime or I forget how we did it. We called Guy because Guy, Guy Mariano, like we're talking to him and we're like, dude, look at the spot we skated. And he's like, I'm coming out tomorrow. <laughs> and he got a flight that next day, flew out, and we skated, and we filmed for fucking two weeks, and then he went to Thailand. So I'm, like, kind of rant, no, rambling. Like, but keep, keep it going. This it's, is awesome. It's a fun, it was a fun time. Like, I went – so guy comes out. We're skating. We film in Shenzhen. No, I'm sorry. We went to Shenzhen, but – no, I'm sorry. We went to Guangzhou. And then we're skating there for a while, and then Claire was like, hey, I'm going to go on a little vacation to Thailand. It's like – we're like, oh, cool. We'll just like, I don't know. Like by that time we'll leave. And then I'm like, no, dude, I want to go to Thailand. Fuck it. Like, let's go. We got tickets randomly. Went, went in this island. And uh, he tells me, Koh Samet maybe is what it's called. But one of this island was like, it was one of those like the blue waters. Like you're like, you're like, can't believe you're there. Dude, we chilled for four days with me and LD with like shirts off the whole time, no shoes on, just walking around this island, drinking beers, having good food. And it was like the actual vacation, my first actual vacation. Um, so that was cool. And we went back and we went to Shanghai and I got to skate. Or was it? Yeah, it was Shanghai and I skated there. It was super sick. And then like that was, it was way more like easier that way rather than staying in one place for two months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got to travel around. Move around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that was fun. That, that's something you find when I think you get older is, you know, Buds and I have been on some trips, like our later ones, and, and you know, we went to Finland recently, and, and like, making sure, you know, when, when you're young, you're like, I just need to get fucking tricks, that's it, like, yeah. I'm just here to just get tricks, and, like, you're just, like, 
you know, go, driving through. I remember like being on tours or something and like, I'm not even, we're like Italian countrysides and I'm like playing big buck hunter on my iPad. Like, <laughs> we're driving by like old castles and not shit. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, we're dude. just like <laughs> shooting the bulls and stuff. You're and not like, even like aware of what's going on <laughs> outside, like a histo- history going no, outside. You're like, I'm just trying to back up this fucking rail. Come on, dude. Yeah. And, then, and then like, you're, buck hunter, and, and then, uh, but, but as you, we've gotten older, learn like just, enjoy that experience you're not going to get it back so you know we went uh to finland and we were like jumping in the cold they have like in the middle of winter these cold uh ponds where you can go swim in and then you there's like a hot sauna and you come out and and then we go like all around and just it kind of experience the the lay of the land a little bit same with kazakhstan and, and like when you're young like, you, you don't really appreciate those type of things yeah. as you do but that you know going on a on a skate no, oh, dude, that's, trip and then going on vacation is like that's how to do it. Man. Yeah, no, that was I. But I didn't even really want to do that back then either. Yeah, it was I did. I was like, well, this is actually kind of tight. But like, it's cool now because I'll like I've never taken vacation other than that one. That was a part of a skate trip, so I don't really call that a vacation. But it's cool. To like now, but I went to Hawaii. Actually, with that Hawaii was a. I went to Hawaii on a skate trip and it was basically vacation. Yeah, you know what sweet. I mean. Like it basically was. You Remember Shimadi? Yeah, yeah, dude, that was a cool. You guys shot some cool little like looks on that stuff. Yeah, right? so that was funny because I, f- I went there like before we posted all that stuff. Like I, I went there like a week or no a month before, and I didn't post any of the stuff I got. I just waited. It's like oh, when Shimadi's shoe comes out, I'll post everything on my story. So it like makes sense because mm-hmm. if I do that, then. Be like, what are you guys doing? And like, oh, wait a month and you'll see. And then like, it would come out a month later. So I put that whole experience. And then people were like, dude, you're it's cool. You're in Hawaii right now. I'm like, I'm in Venice and <laughs> I'm chilling. But it was, but it was such a cool. Like you were talking about earlier that you don't really go to like warm places. I guess you'd say. Do you, you have you been to Hawaii? No, dude. You should I have just, it sick, dude. You should go. Like, and I usually don't really care about going to places just to chill. Yeah, but that place is worth it. Cool. Because you can go, especially if you have like, I'll link you with uh, Schmatty's homies out there because that's where he's from in Honolulu. And they showed an amazing time. Like, Shout out to Fitted. <laughs> Give him a big R- old air horn. Renee Matheson, uh, OG Pro, wrote, wrote for New Deal back in the day. But uh, he has his company and like he took us out in his boat. And like we went to the sandbar. Like you, you drive in the middle, or not drive, you, you get your boat, go in the middle of the, of the ocean. And there's a sandbar and people are just kicking it, drinking beers and like partying. But when we went, it was super mellow, but it was like a Monday or something. But like this, that'll, and it's like blue waters, turtles, like going around. Oh, they got turtles? Yeah. yeah they got sea turtles. <laughs> oh, see? damn. They got turtles? All right. Yeah. It, don't it's, mess with the turtles, though. They don't like it. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea to You're mess with the I mean, jungle. I'm not trying to, I just want to see it. That People like cool. to grab them and see oh, yeah. if they'll yeah. pull them around, but they'll tell you don't, don't yeah. fuck with the turtles. That, that's so. what Smatty was saying. He's like, yo, we used to just get in those things, just go around. I was like, really? That's Isn't like that a Mario normal? Kart type of shit. Kind of. Yeah. Similar. Yeah, and like, uh, yeah, we went and we saw like where they made um, Jurassic Park. Oh, no way. Yeah, it was like this crazy island thing right there. And Mm. like, where the 50 first dates. Okay. There was like all this little zone right there. Yeah, I was like, it was was just really cool to see all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, vacation's tight. I don't do it too often. (laughs) Vacation's tight. Yeah. (laughs) Make that a shirt, dude. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good shirt. Maybe we'll do a bomb hole uh, hole company vacation out there. Dude, to Hawaii? Woo. You guys need to, do you guys take time off to do this podcast or? I'm sure you guys do a little bit, but like I, yeah, I do. I need my sanity. Yeah, I go ride my dirt bike. That's my vacation. I'm going actually next weekend to wash to Washington to ride my dirt bike and I'll take like five days and do that, and then I'm good. But so when it's this time of the year, snowboarding's not really a thing right now, right? Like, no. is so. Well, how does that work? Like, how does your job go as a pro snowboarder if there's nothing going on? Do you just go to places like on the other side of the? a world you, you we can right now it's kind of all yeah, done. people are going over right now like a lot of the top what, pros Australia? that compete are going over to uh sauce Fe, which is Sos in switzerland Fe. so oh. i used to do that in in you know earlier like 2010s you go to sauce Fe in the fall so right now you're going to sauce Fe till it's really good till maybe mid-october or something glacier, like that right? that's so a glacier so th- that's yeah. like you know they're real real high mountains and then all summer you can go to Mount Hood for the most part of the summer. So, oh, so okay. really when you're when you're really doing it, like the guys that are winning all the contests, they're snowboarding, you know, probably eight, nine, maybe even ten months out of the year, depending. Oh, so okay. You well, can you, you got South America, yep. Australia, New Zealand because mm-hmm. they're flipped, their seasons are flipped. Oh yeah, okay. But the way that's the thing that's really cool, like if you the, the average probably pro in air quotes that's doing it, they're probably going to Mount Hood for a week or two in the summer, riding there, and then. 
um, or the whole summer, depending, but usually just a couple of weeks. And then winter hits and you probably have about five months, four and a half to like really get it, you know, from November, what, November, December, January, February, March, April, maybe. Yeah, I guess that's six months. Six months. And in those six months, you just, you just fucking pin it, you know? Yeah. So you go just, hard. you go super hard in those six months and then you're able, able to chill. And, and so it's, it's a cool it's a cool, like, you know, normally I, I've kind of uh, turned the volume down on my riding now. We put a lot more effort towards this. Still mm -hmm. still ride and, and do the do the damn thing and go get tricks. But this time of year, like, when I was younger, it was like, oh, fuck, we're getting fired up for the winter. You're yeah. kind of, like, <laughs> hitting the gym the and, gym like, trying to, yeah. Yeah, like go just, time. Yeah. yeah, trying to get, get wrapped up and get, get excited. So it's kind of a cool deal. But, That's yes. Tight. I mean, I was weird growing up where I'm from. Like, there was no seasons. Yeah, right? Oh, we California. Had, we had buttery... All day, every day. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> Season year round. <laughs> it was dope, dude. And like, I don't know. I tripped out. Like, that's when I started traveling. I was like, wait, it snows places like all <laughs> the time. Like, you know, I, I wasn't. I just didn't really think about it. I guess mm -hmm. you know. But uh, yeah, I'm very blessed to live where I live. But yeah, this I my first. No, oh, I came into Utah that one time. But yeah, this the, this the, you know I was really stoked at the street league was that the crowd was so awesome. Yeah, like I can sometimes crowds are kind of. They're, they're, they don't have that much energy. Yeah. Brazil, you saw the Brazilians there yesterday. Dude, when you go to a skate contest in Brazil, it is unbelievably wild. It is one of the coolest things ever. The passion is so real. And I love Brazilians, dude. Just for the uh, the passion they bring, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and the talent, obviously. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of passion. Like, we see Raisa, like, she's hyping up the crowd. And the crowd's going nuts. It's like, it's just a really cool thing to see. But mm -hmm. One thing, I mean, our little skate community here is fucking killer, dude. Like, if you saw last night, they had the um, the adult toy game of skate, you know? And, and so, I don't know. Did you see any of the videos of that? I saw something. I didn't really see what happened, dude, but I saw, like... They, they do this thing in the summer, like, on, on Saturday nights, you know, for bunch of weeks especially pre-covid but basically everybody would go to the roof of this parking garage and there's you know 300 people at 9 p.m and there's a little <laughs> gauntlet of and they do games of skate impromptu and it was something they did every weekend you know right before covid hit and it's like so there's a kind of a cool little culture of skateboarding here that's awesome so i don't know if, if anybody you know when, when street league was here for people that are unfamiliar they they did an adult toy game of skate in a parking lot it looked like 200 people and yeah. there's a gauntlet of people playing skate and Nija is playing skate yeah. and, and freaking, um, what's his name that states for converse? Uh, the, the kid that Louis Lopez, oh, he, yeah, yeah. he ended up beating the, the kid that has, uh, th there's a winner for the series and you get a WWF belt and Louis Lopez ended up winning our local buddy Cordell and uh beating him and he got the the wwf belt so we do we have a pretty was it cordell black uh, yeah it is yep yeah he's her his name is brought up on our show a few times yeah i met him at the bar the other night oh no way like, yeah. <laughs> let's give, give an air Dell. <laughs> yeah delski lost the belt to louie but um it, it's definitely does that mean the belt's leaving town or what the belt's leaving town well, yeah. what are they gonna do about I that i have to get a new belt <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that hard though dude I, i'll go back real quick because this is kind of a crazy one when i was judging a street league in rio in uh in brazil like there was one contest was this big bump to flat bar thing it was super gnarly and it was a like that kid ivan montiero yeah he got smoked and like mm -hmm. hit his face and like passed out and like uh -huh. teeth were flying out and shit it's like oh bleeding. that that street league feature that yeah. was fucked up Is dude it? i don't know i just i was i watched it in person oh, God, yeah. and to be there for that in person was the wildest thing because that happened it was horrible I was like, oh my god oh my god that was horrible that was horrible and then he's bleeding and he like kind of sees his blood and he passes out and then everyone like and then over in the corner in this crowd the crowd's packed by the way it's it's sold out it's only like ten thousand people and they're going nuts so oh all this commotion goes on over here and i'm like what the fuck ambulance like, people and then oh over here like something happens people are just passing out oh from seeing it just from seeing it they're so oh. passionate everything there's so much craziness in, like in the air i guess they're seeing the blood and they're like no and it's brazilian doing this is happening to Passing out over there, passing out over there. And wow. I'm like, and I felt like I was in like some weird, like crazy movie where like, like I don't even know, like the the what is it called when they they say like the devil's gonna come and kill everyone? I don't even know the uh, the end of the world. The end of the world, or basically. Or apocalypse. You know? Yeah, they, I thought, what's going on right now, <laughs> dude? Like this is not normal. Yeah. But then it was just like something. It, it just, I realized the culture there. Like, they're so it, passionate. They're so passionate about you know, especially their own country yeah totally that i just thought that was pretty crazy but also yeah. awesome that yeah. like they loved it so much mm -hmm. you know it's kind of wild when you think about street league you guys just came to town and it's like 
Dude, ev- all the skaters from the surrounding area come come to street league. And so, like, everywhere you guys go, there's just a flock of people that are passionate about skateboarding. It's kind of it's got to be cool to be in the in the epicenter of that. Yeah, and I think it's what's crazy is growing up in the L.A. area that we're so used to seeing the pros that when you, like, kids don't act like, or people back in L.A. don't act like they do when you go other places. Mm-hmm. So when you go to, like, a street league here, they're like, oh, dude, Kelly, or, like, you know, like, back home, no one's, I'm fucking, no one cares. Like, you know? <laughs> like we just saw Nigel three flip, like, yeah. two streets over, dude. Yeah, like, 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 well, like yeah, exactly. But, like, you go here and you see Nigel and they trip out. And I, 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 my mine was a bad example. I would say, like, maybe the, the bigger pros, like a Nigel or something. Like, they see Nigel around all the time back home, you know. But when they see him out, it, maybe Nigel's different, too, because he's actually so popular. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, when you go to places where you don't see a lot of the pros, they, they flip out. And it's cool to see everyone come out and for that cause, or just to see him skate, you know. Mm-hmm. This is pretty sick. Well, killer. Man, I think we've been doing it. Um, you know, one last thing, a couple of last things I want to wrap up here with is, you know, you're a team manager, yeah. and you kind of are – talent scouting you could say uh from time to time now what advice do you have there's a kid that's like fuck i'm trying to trying to get sponsored how do i do it you know we get asked that a lot on our show like what advice do you have for uh a kid that's trying to get sponsored um i mean it's so weird how things have changed over the years uh, about how to get sponsored but i think at the end of the day is just being like if you love skating do it because you love it don't because you're gonna make money off of it because that's that's you're gonna get cut out real quick people will see that but think about who you like like what skaters you like who do you want to ride for who do you want to ride with if you like when i was a kid girl in chocolate you're like or like i want to skate with those dudes so like if you aim for that then you know what i mean don't send like if don't just send your tape out to 14 people hopefully someone bites like figure out who you want to skate for and and like maybe a shoe brand or whatever like and then work on it you know, and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to not only skate to the, that, that level to, for them to put you on, but you're going to have to act cool around the people too. You have to blend in. So personality or working with the people is huge. It's almost just as much as the skating because there's so many good skaters that come around and then you're like, dude, that is the worst. Nobody wants to be around. Them. No one wants to be around them. You know what I mean? So that's a huge thing. And so just you know, just kind of being cool and just going with the flow. And, and, and the beginning part, you're going to have to take some shit from the older guys. This is just the way it goes. I, I actually don't, I, I don't know how it is these days. I don't give anyone, I don't give the younger kids shit. Like, you know, I yeah. got, I, I get, I get picked. I got like fucked with a lot because I was a younger kid out of all the, all of my friends. Yeah. So I got picked on a lot, which I think maybe kind of pushed me to go harder shit. But um, but also when people are talking shit on you, it's usually a form of endearment. Yeah, it's usually like they're only doing that with people they really fuck with. Yeah, and most times if they don't like you, they just don't talk to you. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's kind of the deal. They don't even take the time to make funny. Exactly. So if they're bringing you around, just be respectful to them, and you're gonna have to just do the grind for the while. And at that point, you're not really gonna care. You're just gonna want to do that. So like you know, sleeping on the ground, like or like on the couch, like back then, I didn't give a shit at all. I'll do whatever I need to do to go skate the next day with fucking Ryan Gallant. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so it's just those things. You're just going to have to do it. But it's different looking at an older person because you're like, damn, would I go through that again in my <laughs> lifestyle now? You're like, probably not. But as a kid, like, that's all you wanted to do. So it's different, you know. But, uh, yeah, that I would say that. It's just just you got you to gotta be cool too, man. Mm-hmm. Don't be a dickhead. That's good. Don't be that's good because that's so crucial. No yeah. one wants to travel around with a dickhead. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> man. That's just like the worst, you know. So fuck yeah. You want to hit any thank yous before we uh, put a bow on this thing? My parents, my family, uh, big supporters, and like they help me out a lot. And it's like pretty proud to see. Just I don't know. My like they're doctors and lawyers and shit like that. Like they gave me a lot of support to seeing me. Like you're gonna go do what? You're going to skate? Okay. All right, go for it. We'll support you. So it's like it was really cool to, like, have the support from them when they w- had no idea what that structure was going to be, what was going to happen, you know? Um, that, like, Don Brown for giving me a chance, Troy Morgan at KO for hooking me up, NHS, Jeff Kendall, Cairo, um, Stephen Trulos uh, at NHS, Chris Roberts, Roger, Jerron, Justin, Steezus, uh, Tim Olson, uh, JC, and – there's a lot. If I'm forgetting someone, I'm sure it happens all the time. They know who they are, though. Yeah, and 
Damn, friends back home. I don't know. It's just like everyone in Venice, and I'm just happy to be here, and I'm stoked. And uh, if I can help skateboarding in any way, I'd be here to do it, and I, I love it. So that's uh, thank you, skateboarding. I know it sounds not cliche to say, but you know, it, it like it's it's isn't that weird to think that like there's all this stuff going on in the world, like pe when we're younger, like there's everyone's doing like an actual occupation. And you had to do it, like, you had to go to college and do these things and go to do SATs and all this stuff. And we kind of were that generation where we we just didn't do that. You know what I mean? And I'm, like, really glad it worked out. And people looked, like, my parents looked at us and were like, all right, cool, do what you got to do, you know? And I feel like a generation before it might have not worked, you know? So I'm just thankful for, every, like, and seeing skateboarding, seeing where it's at now, it's, gonna be, it's nuts, so... Yeah, thanks, or Jeff Landy, for getting me in there at World Skate to do go to the Olympics and work. And, yeah, fucking thank you guys. It's fucking rad to be on here, and I'm stoked, and it's cool to be on this side. <laughs> and thank you, De Liquid Death and Pub Beer. <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to do yeah, it. I know how to do it. It's we obvious how passionate you are for yeah. skating. It's <laughs> rad, rad to see this. Dude, oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. It's so wild, too, if you think about, like, what we're, like, because of this fucking little piece of wood with wheels on it that you roll around on that you dedicate your life to, you've created this fucking awesome life. Mm -hmm. And it's just cool to know there's no blueprint. There's no road. There's no, you go to college, you get a doctor, whatever, you know, you, you're, you paved your own way. And, and yeah. uh, it's inspiration for people listening to know that, you, you know, you follow your passion and it, and it can work out. And I also do want to say, cause I consider myself a skateboarder as well on behalf of the skateboard community for what you guys are doing for the culture. It's huge. So, Oh, thank you. Thank dude. you. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you guys, dude. Uh, I think that's this is what like the culture needs kind of like is a podcast or like someone to meet these skaters personally and get to know them without actually talking to them. But or you guys can talk to them. But the, the listeners get to like listen and hear the stories from the person and see just hearing them talk and their mannerisms and all that stuff. It's really like it's a cool thing. So, yeah, no, thank you guys. And thanks for having me here. And. I'm ready to go hit the town. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you guys so much for listening, watching. Uh, all of our Patreon members, all of our sponsors, all of our listeners, you guys fucking rule. We will see you next week over and out from the bomb hole.